Welcome back to the Wildcast Podcast. This is episode nine. I am, of course, your host, Tyler, a.k.a. I am Wildcat, joined with my co-host, Anthony, a.k.a. Big Jiggly Panda. Yes, and again, this is episode nine. The Wildcast Podcast is the greatest podcast in the entire universe, according to me and Anthony and our mothers. And uh, it's yeah, science. Yeah, it is. It is actually a proven fact that our yeah. moms are just they just have that knowledge. They know all about yeah. podcasts. They know they've ranked every single one. From one to ten billion, ours is first, which is incredible. Yeah. I'm really, yeah, I'm. My shocked. mom actually just texted me and she said, "Honey, you have the best podcast of all podcast." Neil deGrasse Tyson told me so. You guys can, of course, get the video version here on YouTube on my YouTube channel, I Am Wildcat. But there's also audio only versions if that's more your speed and you want to, you know, listen while you're out and about on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcasts, all of which are linked down below in the description. Or you can just look them up, search up the Wildcast on all those platforms. You can find it super easy. All the episodes are up there. Thank you guys who watch and listen. Well, I guess you listen on those platforms, but thank you. It's appreciated. Today's episode, we are joined by Devin Nash, former CEO of CLG, current CMO of Nerd Fusion, a talent agency. This man knows everything and anything about starting a Twitch stream, a YouTube channel, content creation, esports, the gaming industry in whole. And we had a great conversation about how to start off a YouTube channel, how to start a Twitch stream, and just a lot of insider information. It was it was very valuable to, to us, and hopefully it's very valuable to you guys, and you enjoy it. But first... We're going to have to hear a word from our sponsor, Manscaped. That's right. Support for this podcast comes from Manscaped, and they are here to help remind you to keep your D-pad clean. We want to help you level up your grooming game, and our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming, are here to help. Listen up, gamers. If you want to maximize the use of your joystick, start taking some notes. Have you ever had an incident where you're standing over the toilet, you're shaving your bean satchel, and then suddenly... Ah! Ah! You hear a plop and you look down in the toilet, one of your testes has fallen from its encompassing satchel because you nicked it so hard your balls fell out. No? Well, that's that's probably pretty good because with the lawnmower 3.0, that's never going to happen. With its cut-free technology, look at that. I'm just shaving my wrist smooth as a baby's bottom. Manscaped has focused their resources on designing the best ball hair trimmer ever. In fact, it's the greatest invention since the lawnmower 2.0. That's right, the lawnmower 3.0 is their third generation cutting edge trimmer which features a ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped TM. Their perfect package 3.0 not only comes with the lawnmower 3.0 but it also comes with a ton of liquid formulations to help groom and maintain your boo sack. That's right ladies and gentlemen, not only is there liquids within your sack, we've got some liquids to put on the outside of your sack, like the, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. After a nice clean shave with your sack just grinding between your thighs, it's gonna chafe. This will help prevent that. Yes, it will. If you're halfway through your day and you're getting a little swampy in the regions, throw on some of the Crop Reviver to put a little bit of pep in your step and freshen up the old beans. Actual. The perfect package also comes with this beautiful travel bag, disposable shaving mats, and a set of the comfiest anti-chafing boxers you've ever seen and ever worn. They're quite lovely, they feel nice. So if you guys want to check out the perfect package 3.0, you can head on over to manscaped.com and use the code WILDCAST20 to get 20% off and free shipping. That's right, you can click the link down below in the description or head on over to manscaped.com, M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D dot C-O-M and use code WILDCAST20. You get yourself 20% off and free shipping. So don't be a noob and trim your pubes. Don't be a nubbus. Trim your pubis. <laughs> he is in he is in outer space. Look at that dude. I could be anywhere though. I can I can also do uh the green wall if you guys want. But that but it actually is a green wall. I can't change it. Wait, what do you mean? Like, like it's just the green. Oh, the wall is painted green. Like you have a green screen. Wall? I'm in an office. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is like this is my studio. Okay, cool. So do you that is that typically where you stream from? Do you have an at home setup too? No, fuck yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You just yeah. like to like to keep things separated. I do. Yeah. I I try to I try to turn out. I I, I spend so little time at home, right? Because I, I have a. Uh, like two full time jobs, so like I just I never get there. So when I yeah. do, I really want to just like. Totally Shut chill down. out. True. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. I've been thinking about like getting an office space and like really kind of separating everything and having to like drive to work. But I don't know. I like I like being home, but it does make it like impossible to separate 
Like at any point in time, I could be like just chilling on the couch, relaxing, and it's just like, oh, I gotta go do something. I gotta go run upstairs. I gotta go record this. I gotta go reply That's to this. Stopping me from doing that. What? Dude, it was one of those things where I thought that it would be. I, I never understood why people would have like an office or anything. And when I started this uh, this company, and we just like we you know I was like we might as well because I have like my I turn my office into a studio mostly for fun, and then like. I was like, I can't like today. I can't imagine like working at home again. I just, I just can't even. I, I can tell you, like, it's one of those things you switch to, and it's like, holy shit, what was I doing? Really? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I would like it. I don't know. But I've been thinking about trying it. I know a lot of the, like a lot of YouTubers so get their full like yeah they have like a full on office mm. set up with you know like editors and whatever working there and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. I I feel like what we do is we we we're way too spontaneous, Anthony. Like our group. Like, we never have scheduled sessions, it's just, hey, I feel like playing, how many other people are around to play, and then we just go and record whatever. Right. Um, That's cool. Yeah. But. I read something recently that I'm going to try, it's it's more of like a mental thing for yourself, but it's to, when you want to start your day, to either take a walk or like a short drive, and then when yeah. you get back home, you're at work. And then when, you're, when oh. you tell yourself, you know what, I'm done for the day, I just want to relax, do another short walk or a short drive, and then when you're back home, you're at home now and say fuck it to your office. You don't even get close to it. Just to tell yourself, like, I'm in work mode now. It's not just like, oh, Evan wants to record at 1 a.m. No, fuck that. Stay downstairs, keep watching anime. Like, just, <laughs> you're at home now. You're not in work mode. So I'm gonna try I like that. that. I've never heard that before. I like that a lot. That's cool. I've been kind of, I've been getting up and then, like, going on a run and then, like, taking a cold shower, and that's been, like, full on, like, I'm like, all right, I'm officially up. I'm not at home anymore. Like, it's time to go get stuff done. That's been good. Yeah. So um, you guys have the mindset set shift. Yeah. Sense. All right. Well, welcome, Devin. Appreciate Thanks, you man. coming on. Um, so I guess just to quickly run through, you're former CEO of CLG, right? For a few years. Now you're the, the CMO of Nerd Fusion, a talent mm -hmm. agency. Uh, you do some of your own streaming and YouTube videos, which is how I came across your stuff. I've, I've just saw your YouTube videos like pop up and recommended, and I always like just kind of learning more and hearing other people's thoughts about this whole gaming industry that we're, you know, we're all a part of and stuff. So that's how I discovered you. I don't know if there's, you know, if you want to fill in some gaps there or how things came to be or, or take us all the way back to when it started. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it started on EverQuest one when I was, my mom was putting quesadillas under my door because I <laughs> wouldn't stop gaming. That That's my, my earliest memory. <laughs> like, um, I, I got into business really early. Uh, I started in ebooks and marketing, so like like really classic like old school AdWords ebooks, and I did that when I was sixteen. Like did that all the way through college. Started a marketing company in college. Uh, I sold that, and then I did an IT services company, which is a, a kind of like a elongated way of saying that I fixed computers for. Um, for people that like, couldn't fix computers, <laughs> yeah, no for idea old, they're for doing. old people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then uh, after that, I um, started broadcasting full time. That was like 2012 ish. And I went till like 2015 until I realized like, man, I really need like another career that's not streaming. Like I'm, I'm, I love broadcasting, but I, I need to have something to myself that's like more than that. And so I got back into the business world through esports. Um, I worked for a team called Team Data Toss and I ran North America for them. And then I took on CLG um, as um, CEO. And then like, I think. We sold the Madison Square Garden in, I don't know, 2018, I think. Um, I took some time to wander the earth, and then I came back here and um, work on a talent agency with my uh, my business partner Matt, who's a uh, seven is also like really big Minecrafter. Well, cool. That, that's now I'm here. Yeah, you started streaming and stuff in like 2012. That's about when we started. Just give you some background on us. We started YouTube in 2011. Um, I uploaded my first video, and under the comments of my first video was a comment from another YouTuber named Vanoss Gaming who at the mm -hmm. time had like 15, 20 subscribers just starting out like me, and he was just looking for other people who had just started out. He did the same to Anthony, sent him a message. And so now we have like these three or four friends all just starting out on YouTube, 20 to 25 subscribers. No one knows what they're doing. Um, but over the years, you know, gathered more and more friends, made more videos together, and yeah, now, now we are where we Isn't are. Isn't that incredible? It, it's it, A lot of people don't realize that every single person starts from zero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and like you see like the 7 million subscribers, you're like, how, like what? Like, but it's like, no, like you started from 
zero like you yeah. started from no one yeah. I, st I still vividly remember like literally creating my channel uploading my first video and then just telling like a few friends that i like gamed with like hey go watch my video it was so <laughs> terrible so i feel bad for subjecting them to that but you know you gotta start somewhere I did the same thing that's how i got my first couple of views i was like wow i got 15 views yeah no wonder i sent it to 20 people like <laughs> <laughs> 20 people oh man a fourth of them said that's nah, not worth my time to even no. click on it you guys are like, so I got started on the YouTube game relatively late. Like, I've only really seriously committed to a channel, I'd say, in the last, like, seven or eight months. And I, I've been uh, just so preoccupied with, like, all the other aspects of the gaming industry. Uh, I, I actually love YouTube, I think, more than any other thing that I do. Um, Me too. Because of the... Because <laughs> well, yeah, of, like, the, the, the analytical, analytical aspect of it is, like, you can really look into it and you can be like, okay, um, I, I, I like, by the minute almost, I can make decisions that will, like, increase my video views that will I, I can change thumbnails i can do like the analytics are so great and i just love that from a business perspective coming from twitch which is like well if you're a funny streamer then people will check you out and it's yeah. like well, like there's everything's so nebulous it's really difficult to yeah yeah so yeah. i mean so so my base is like the idea for having you come on was one i was really interested in, in just hearing your thoughts on all this stuff but two like anthony and i get asked a lot about how to start out on youtube how to start out with streaming mm -hmm. how to grow your brand how to do this how to you know just kind of how to navigate this whole gaming industry and I just thought you would be a good person to come on and have that conversation because we don't you know being a youtuber you don't interact with your viewers as much you know like I upload a video and then there's comments or whatever I might interact with a few right. tweets or whatever but it's not like streaming where it's live back to back and so I get that question asked sometime while I'm streaming but I don't stream super full time so it's like a couple hour stream in that two hour stream I just want to focus on like providing entertaining gameplay I'm not trying to have you know like a deep one-on-one -on -one conversation and so I think yeah. this would be a good kind of medium to have that chat and uh, I, I thought it. you you know you you have a lot of interesting perspectives um, a lot of experience that Anthony and I don't have because our like I said our kind of background is primarily just from YouTube you know we don't have I don't know anything about how to grow a stream I know how to grow a YouTube channel and then from there make you know make some people show up to your stream but that's about it right um, so I think that's interesting but yeah I've always preferred YouTube you know I've done streaming over the years I've you know I have a streaming contract currently so I do stream but even still, like while I'm streaming, I'm like, man, I this makes me realize how much more I enjoy the idea yeah. of like creating a video behind the scenes, spending the time behind the scenes and like pushing out one thing and then seeing what people think and just kind of navigating like that algorithm and stuff. It's pretty fun. But. I think the storylines that you have to learn to create YouTube videos automatically set you up to be a better content creator. And like the crutch of streaming is that you can click start stream and you don't have to be anywhere. Like you could just you could just be playing a game and you can like do that for hours. But with YouTube, like your video has to have a point. Like it has mm -hmm. to have a, a start, mid, like it has to have the basic construct of a story. It's like okay, like your YouTube video just can't be like, all right, guys, uh, we're playing some video game. I mean, I guess I mean I guess I it mean, can people, be, but people like, definitely no yeah, to, people yeah, definitely like, do that. And yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I see people all the time like starting out and they think that just just them playing a game alone is gonna be like like, oh, this is great. I can watch myself play this game. Like, this is such a great video. But at the end of the day, it's like, no, like, you're not doing anything special. It's, you know, you think it's special because it's you that you're seeing in the video as opposed to whoever you're used to watching. But yeah, I feel like a but lot no of people kind of, yeah, a lot of people miss that yeah. point of like, you need to make videos with a purpose, not just record a bunch and then upload it. But yeah. And, and so that's why. So it's really funny that you're like, I don't. Like, I, I don't know how to grow a stream because <laughs> I actually think you're probably better at growing a stream than almost anyone. And the, and, and the reason is, well, how many, like, for example, how many concurrent viewers do you get on it, your stream? It depends on the game, but I say if I'm playing like a game that's popular on my channel, so like a Minecraft or a Modern Warfare, I'll get probably uh -huh. like 15, 10 to 15,000 viewers. 10 to 15,000? Yeah. Where do you stream? What, on what on YouTube, on YouTube. Okay. So I would not get nearly as many on Twitch. Just because, you know, obviously on YouTube, I have the platform of seven and a half million subscribers that get the stream oh, sent to I their wanna, feed or whatever. But I want to talk to you so much about YouTube streaming. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Uh, um, <laughs> so even if you had a tenth of the viewers on Twitch, right? Uh, well, let's say you just have a thousand. You would still be in the top zero, zero, six, eight percent of people that broadcast. Um, you'd be you'd be well, well beyond like what anybody's doing. And the reason for that is because of what. Uh, so so. Whenever I, whenever people ask me how to grow a stream, which is really often, I archived over a thousand emails over the last thirteen days. <laughs> <laughs> they were mostly that, yeah. And it's it just like how to grow a brand or whatever. Um, and I don't know what that is because I've talked to larger broadcasters who are all, and they don't get emails like that. Like they don't, they get some that are just, but they like for whatever reason, like I have 
I, I have so many freaking people asking this question. So it's cool to be able to talk about it in this context. I say, I hope um, you like it because it's, it's gotta be super oh, I, annoying I to get asked like the same it. question a thousand times. Yeah. I would, I would move to like an ashram and like, <laughs> like just like disconnect from all humanity. If I didn't like doing this, like <laughs> I could deal with it. Like I, I think um, the first like, recommendation I ever give anybody, if they're going to be a Twitch streamer is to start on YouTube. And, and, and the reason is not just because I think that it is a platform that allows really good transference of viewership to live, but also because uh, it tells you how to craft a story. It tells you how to be a content creator. And if you don't, if you're not able to do that, you will probably never be successful streaming. There are some people that sort of like happen upon it because they happen to be good storytellers and they happen to be very engaging, but they, they, that's like a pretty rare thing. And, and, and these days doesn't matter. You can't get discovered on Twitch at, at, at any kind of like zero to a hundred, zero to 500 even. Yeah. So I've seen, I've seen, I've seen you mention Twitch. that in videos. That's kind of interesting. I, that's like, dude, that's like my thing. This is why I have this thing. Like, dude, attention. <laughs> you will not be able to grow on Twitch. Start on YouTube instead. Like, I, that's why I have this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I have to say it like so many times, right? Like, and when, when, like, when you, you say start on, on when you say start on YouTube, you mean start like creating videos, right? Not streaming on YouTube, or do you mean streaming? I mean, yeah. So, so well, that's another whole question, but like um, yeah. that we should get to because that's a crazy, crazy uh, thing. Um, I mean that like if you if your intention is I want to be a Twitch streamer, um, you should start by making YouTube videos. <laughs> it sounds really counterintuitive, but that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, I mean, it makes sense. It's like if, if you want to be a movie actor, they usually recommend you do improv yeah. or theater or, or improv yeah. to, mm -hmm. to build sort of the skills needed to do so. And I was actually going to ask that as soon as you mentioned that uh, YouTube, especially with their algorithms, do you think the benefit of seeing what people like about what you're putting out and then taking that and transferring it to a stream sets you better up for success than like you're saying, just hopping onto Twitch and being like, yeah, I mean, okay, if, you, yeah, if you're streaming, in, if you're, four hours. yeah, if you're streaming in front of no one, you're not getting any feedback on anything. So, yeah. right. I I think that is a factor, but you the keyword you used there that was really important was algorithm, mm -hmm. and, and so the main difference between YouTube and Twitch is that YouTube has the most advanced non-military ML. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because yeah. I just assume that they have something that's like freaking crazy, like you know, like some some stuff from Mars or some uh, the expanse. Oh, it's got to be, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, but some like lost the Wakandan best... technology. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, like um, YouTube, I think, um, with the algorithmic learning, will if you have a, a channel with zero subscribers in 2020, you can get discovered. And, and that's crazy, given the saturation, the number of creators that there are on YouTube. Like, you can start a channel from nothing, and your first video can get a million views. Look at Genelania, for example, right? Like, you can, if you hit the algorithm right, if you do, do it right, it can push you. Whereas on Twitch, you can't do that. On Twitch, like, if you start a stream with zero viewers, no, there's no form of discovery implemented on the website aside from literally help you get aside from literally someone just like oh let me scroll down to the zero viewers list of whatever game for whatever like yeah there's you're just so buried so let's pull up uh something for fun like let's look at the fortnite fortnite's not even like that big of a deal right now right like it's uh, i guess it's yeah like, it's, it's still doing pretty well but yeah it's definitely not yeah. where it was so in the last 30 days, there were 650,276 broadcasters on Fortnite on Twitch. How many? 60,000? 650,000. 650,000. Yeah. So even if you're a, a streamer with 30 or 40 viewers, the amount of time, you'd have to scroll down for about, I'd say probably 10 to 12 minutes. Just, just scrolling, just like with Jesus. the mouse wheel, like just <laughs> like uh, to actually find the stream. Yeah, and that's your only method of discovery on Twitch. That's the only way you're going to get found. Is that there's no search function, there's no um, ML, there's no system like that. But I can make a video on YouTube, and I can say top Fortnite plays. Um, I can't believe I won this 10 10 v one, and I can get discovered right away. Yeah, because the I algorithm mean, serves it to people that want it. Yeah, I often see videos like, and it's not like I feel like people have this misconception that like if you go and look through like recommended or whatever, that it's always videos with half a million, a million views. But definitely I see not. I see videos yeah. all the time yeah. with you know a couple thousand or a couple hundred mm -hmm. even sometimes. Like it definitely can happen. 
Um, but YouTube I, yeah. understands you so well now. Like they yeah. have a, they build a profile on every user. It's just so advanced. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did a video a week or two ago of like, I was donating to small streamers on YouTube just because, you know, like I said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm signed with YouTube. So I'm a YouTube exclusive streamer. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to support other streamers on the platform. And I went through and it was actually way easier to find small streamers on YouTube than it ever would have been to find like on Twitch. Like you go on YouTube, you, you, it's a little hard to navigate through the directory of like getting to live. But in terms of like you could type in a game and then sort by live and there's like just scrolling down half a page and you see view, you know, you see people with like 10 viewers, 20 viewers. Do Whereas, you think that's because the, there's less people? There's definitely the less. Yeah. Streaming. Or, or do you think, but, but do you think the search function also like just begets having more, what, what, just more discoverability in that way? Like. Because people are using a search function because on Twitch, they don't use a search function. I don't know about live. I think they need to work on that for live. I think live mm -hmm. content, they need to do a little better job of like, you know, recommending that sometimes. But if because you have to navigate like two or three menus, you have to go through like, you know, you have to go recommended and then gaming and then through gaming live. And then you can pick a couple of games or whatever. But if you type in like whatever games like I was looking for someone streaming Warzone, I just typed in like Warzone and scroll down. And there's a good mix of I mean, it was mostly videos, but then there was a good mix of a few people streaming and it was you know, I found a guy that was streaming. He had like 10 viewers or something or 20 viewers. Um, but I feel like trying to do that on Twitch, I'd be like you said with Fortnite, I'd be scrolling for impossible 10 minutes. But you know, what's, you know, what's really interesting is that everybody, when they talk about YouTube streaming, they always say that, well, the UI sucks. And as if that's like the most like damning thing. And the, the, like from a, from a business perspective, the number one most difficult thing to get is users. This is Twitch's biggest problem. They have to bring in, so there's a difference between non-endemic users and an endemic users. An endemic user would be someone that's familiar with the platform, that's used it for years, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like, a, like sort of a patron to the, to the website. Non-endemic user would be someone that's never heard about Twitch. And Twitch's biggest problem right now is getting users on the website that might even be gamers, but they just don't watch Twitch and they need some kind of like, the education to get into Twitch is really high. Like you imagine going into like a, like a 10,000 person stream, and like all the emote spam, you're like, what the hell is <laughs> yeah. going on? Like, I can't, like, <laughs> like, like, what, what is this like interaction? Like, there's so much to learn, especially for older people. But because YouTube has already breached that chasm, has two billion users, it's like so easy for them to do. Like, everyone thinks the UI holds them back. They just do a UI update, and then like everything's fine. They already have the users. It's the mm -hmm. hardest problem is already solved for YouTube. Yeah, I will say like this, the the YouTube like live control room or whatever, like where you actually initiate like a stream. That area is like something that they're working on because I've I've had mm -hmm. talks with them like, man, this is so confusing because like they even changed something recently but like just a few months ago it would be like you would go on and you're like you would hit go live and they would ask you an option do you want to start a new stream or do you want to mm -hmm. continue a previous stream you did and if you hit continue it would list off ones that you set up before so like it would have the same title and thumbnail of a stream i did like two days ago whether it was like Warzone or whatever and then you would click on that and you would have to update it to like whatever new thumbnail or or title you'd want and then it would have a stream key. You would have to make sure you have the stream key for that stream. Cause if you create a new stream, it'll create a new stream key. So it keeps track of all the streams you did for the past week or whatever. And if you want to continue those and not have to set up, you know, your description and all that stuff, you have to copy the stream key and make sure you have the right stream key. There's been multiple times where I went on, I set up a stream and then I hit start streaming and I had a stream key from a different stream I did a few days ago and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't go live. And I think they've improved that. I think they've improved that now to where your stream key kind of carries over. But yeah, it was it was a mess. Yeah, and it's that still kind of like messy. A, like a surmountable problem, right? Like something that you could fix. Yeah, and I think they're definitely improving on it, but I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, that's one of the most confusing things. And because if you because if you want to set up a new stream, it literally gives you like a blank description, whatever your description default is, which I have a different default for videos versus streaming, and it doesn't let mm -hmm. you differentiate. It's like mine will pop oh, up man. with the default description for a video. Well, when I stream, like, I, I want people to know, you know, if you become a member on my channel, you can access the Discord, and it has to have that information in there. It's like, oh, I have to change this entire description, and add a thumbnail, and add a title, and say what game, and add the new stream key every single time. Yeah, it's a mess. So, so Jesus. do you save your VODs on, um, oh, I gotta turn that notification off, sorry. <laughs> Shout out uh, to DeBear17. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that, like, that guy's gonna watch this video, he's gonna be like, yeah! like, <laughs> like, he's gonna be so excited. Like, uh, cause I'm going directly through OBS, right? So the notifications yeah, are Yeah, no, that's all good. Um, it's funny. So when you, uh, when you, when you, when you stream, do you save your VOD? 
to to the Wildcat channel? Yeah, they're all unlisted in my in my video manager, and I don't oh, make them I don't make I was, them public because I, I've I've you heard and tank I'm, viewers. Yeah, right? it's pretty bad yeah. for your for the algorithm mm -hmm. to be pumping out long two or three hour videos with very low click through rate, very low audience retention. Like it's very bad, and it's so sense. yeah, yeah. And so mm -hmm. I, all my vods are they they're all unlisted. So if I need I always, them, I can download them and you know make a v edited video from them. But right, I always wondered how you, how a YouTube streamer solved that because I was like, man, there's no way that people should be posting their vods to their channel because exact their CTR and watch time is going to take. A few years ago, though, that was what you wanted to do, like back Why? in 2015 and 2016, because YouTube's algorithm heavily favored just overall watch time, and so if you were uploading a two three hour stream every day, you were getting insane watch time every video oh, just yeah. because of the sheer amount of video there was to watch and so you yeah. had guys like typical gamer i remember uh i can't remember what was his name hike i don't know all these like gta guys that would stream gta every day for two hours leave that vod open they were killing it they were always at the top of trending and like search results and whatnot and it was it was so, so frustrating crazy. yeah it was so frustrating because like all they're doing it like it still takes effort but at the end of the day they were just streaming for a couple hours and turning that into the vod whereas you know i might record off stream for two two hours edit it for four to six and then upload a 10 minute video that wouldn't perform as well. But they changed that. Dude, the algorithm dance has been years in the making. When I, I started it with AdWords, like I mentioned before, and that was when Google started this. Okay. Like it's like, it's, it's been a long time. That was like, like years ago, but like you would have this thing where with the way it worked with AdWords is, uh, your website would get a certain page ranking on, on Google and you'd want it to be really high because if you're selling a product or something, then you would want it to show up first mm -hmm. and people would people would buy through it. So Google would change the algorithm and be like, mm, now we want content. And you'd have to like make a blog and you have to post stuff. They're like, mm, <laughs> that's not important anymore. Now we want images. And you'd be like, okay. And then like, and that's the same thing on YouTube. It's like, mm, watch time. And you're like, okay, watch time. Okay, long videos, like, mm, yeah. CTR. And then, you know, like, yeah, yeah, no, know, it's, it's like it's, every few months. Yeah. It's changed a lot and you and it's like, <laughs> you gotta keep track, but it's pretty easy to notice if you just keep track yeah. of like what the top people are doing. Like all of a sudden, man, the clickbait is just running rampant on YouTube. I don't understand. Like, why are so? It's like, well, that's 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 what you need. You need that high click through rate these days. Um, but I remember. You, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was like, do you, do you understand? Because uh, I I don't completely understand this transition. How you know? Like, I know you had Moist Critical on, mm -hmm. and I also talked to him, and, and like his titles are <laughs> in, insane. What, like, like, so his video has, descriptions like, are even crazier. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, this is the greatest whatever of yeah, all this time. Is the, like, that's it. <laughs> so, so he's not getting any SEO at all. There, there's no way that the that there's any like metadata about him, or if no. there is, it's just based on the profile of his channel. How is it that we've moved to like videos like quick, like a, a title that's like click this video? Yeah, which I is don't, like a 39 DAF title. I don't know. Like, I just, like, I just think SEO is just not super important anymore. I think the only, mm -hmm. the only like reason I ever worry about like description and tags and that kind of stuff is just so that way my own videos kind of grouped up together. So if you watch one of my videos, it's more likely that one of my videos is recommended on the sidebar. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, SEO, like it's just not important. Like you don't see people uploading like you know, or as often like Fortnite season three new, you know, new shark, new map, and like listing off a million things in their title. It's better to just be like. The new Fortnite season three update is a mess or whatever it is, whatever your, you know, kind of clickbait catchy title is. Whatever you can do to get somebody to actually click the video, which increases your CTR, which increases your. Yeah. Yeah. And like your, your your thumbnails and your titles at this point have to be the most like just attention getting device that you can possibly do. But we, right? we, we learned that Charlie Critical is is an anomaly. <laughs> I don't know what. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He, OK. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, have you seen 39 Daff? Uh uh. Who's that? This is another one. So 39 Daff is a huge Twitch streamer and she like started on YouTube and has the same type of videos that are just crazy. Like, so the last like three videos she's done weird conversations and it's just a picture of her face. Uh, <laughs> kind of sus. First mukbang confronting <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> like a little bit all over all the place. Pictures but... of her face. I definitely want to check out, you know, first mukbang. <laughs> 30 well, yeah, for watching people eat. 39 daff, is that what it is? Yeah, I linked it. It's it's so Oh yeah, every it, it's just her face. I know. I but her videos are like insanely overperforming. Yeah, I don't it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an explanation like, like it, that's just kind of how it is though. Like if some one person like all it takes is like 
one video of hers like popping off that kind of has that format and then everybody who sees it and enjoyed that video it gets anytime they, into recommended anytime they see another video yeah. it's like oh that looks just like the one i just clicked on like i don't yeah i don't yeah, know yeah exactly yeah. it just gets tossed into recommended and then there it is right it's like so it's like that and so i look at i i you said something really important it's like look at what successful people are doing um i pay a disturbing amount of attention to logan paul um and just like <laughs> watching like what he is doing because i think once he like changed his mentality like he got really heavily inspired by david dobrik at some point i think and i and, and like if you watch his videos now they're so interesting right four minutes maybe five yeah and during the video four to five things happen that are completely separate mm -hmm. from the title the thumbnail and from any kind of stream of consciousness what there's no connection like it's like they'll be saving a dog and then they'll be in like an atv like jumping over like a, a fence or something just a completely different feeling uh, and, and it'll be four or five different totally different themes in a youtube video yeah i haven't kept up with his stuff too much but it looks like he's uploading like once or twice like twice a week ish yeah that's the other so he's thing probably I think just that... yeah he's probably just recording just like everything for like a week or two span and then just random moments just throw them together well what's so crazy about him is that he's doing all of this without being a member of like the youtube pro like premium program so yeah. youtube is never trending his videos and youtube is never like putting him in in like prominent categories because he got removed for that one thing he did <laughs> i don't yeah. remember what it was or something <laughs> yeah which thing <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah he did some he did some weird advertisement or something. I don't remember what it was, but like the, the fact that he can get these views consistently without being on the algorithm is like pretty freaking insane. And it just kind of shows like the, his understanding of the, uh, the marketing space. Right? One, one thing that I've been really fascinated by recently, I don't know. I, are you familiar with Danny Duncan? Have you heard of him? Do you know, so he's yeah. doing that kind of mm -hmm. similar kind of thing, except his videos are longer typically, like 10 to 20 minutes. It's just kind of following him. Like I think right now the videos he up, he's uploading are he's hitchhiking from Florida to California. Like that's yeah. the videos that are going to be uploaded over the next like couple weeks. And he yeah. just pretty much, he's pretty much just like saying yes to everything. You know, he'll just get picked up by anyone. He stops at colleges and does crazy stuff. But one thing with his videos that like, and a couple other people are doing this, they're just like copyrighted music, just blasting throughout the whole video. Like they're not making any ad revenue. They're just playing copyrighted what? music throughout the entire. Yeah. I don't, I'm mind blown by it. I'm so confused, but literally like whatever the top, you know, hip hop songs, or whatever one will play during Danny Duncan's like intro, like little montage, there might be another montage in the middle, but there's multiple copywritten songs throughout one of his 10 to 20 minute videos. And I don't think he generates any ad revenue. He only makes money from, from merch sales. And he's got like crazy shirts of like virginity rocks and like all these like goofy shirts, but that's where all of his, his well, income is coming from. I don't know how that doesn't catch up to him eventually because you can get sued for that. I know friends who have had it happen. I have done a ton in merch. So I've, I've done like esports drops. I've consulted on esports drops and stuff like that. And like merch can carry you super hard. Like the Maverick brand that Logan Paul mm -hmm. has is in of itself like a behemoth. It's like a, it's a multi-million dollar. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I've, I've heard Danny say in a video that like it's like a million dollars a month in merch. But it's, <laughs> but I'm, uh, but I'm still, I mean, that's God. insane. <laughs> but I'm still yeah. blown away by the fact that I don't know. They're just like copyrighted music all throughout because I don't understand how yeah, that he's insane. not going to get. I don't know how to understand how he's not going to get sued. That's happened to friends of ours before, just for having think, sound alike songs. I, yeah. So this is a big thing on Twitch right now, right? Is this like whole DMCA problem? And I think what people maybe don't see is like, unless the music company has a, the large music companies have a pretty good reason that they can gain revenue from you. They're probably not going to go after you in a meaningful way, right? Like they'll, they'll pay service to it. They want to protect their artists. They want to protect like the people that they're representing, but they won't like, like the reason why we haven't seen like a really crazy, like what happened with YouTube and like, what, what year was it? Like 2014, 15 ish when the, when the content ID system got introduced. Probably. Yeah. 14 or 15. Yeah. Around there. Like the, we haven't seen that happen on Twitch because there's no money to be made there. Like they're, 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 you can't like collect, there's no way to collect uh, revenue off of live streams. So you, you, like, so you think that's what it is, is that his, his videos are all getting claimed obviously, and they're getting the revenue from it. So they're like, we don't care. Yep. But how would yep, that work with multiple, so. multiple copyright, multiple copyrighted videos within the one video? Doesn't content ideal um, support that? 
like it can actually split claims. I'm pretty sure it can split revenue. I have no because, idea. Uh, I don't upload a ton of copywritten stuff. I've learned my yeah, lesson. <laughs> have you have you ever watched that YouTube video? There's a really interesting YouTube video on this. It's called um, it's like how I broke the copyright system or something. You could just mm -mm. like search that and okay, so it's like a it's a the way that this guy did this, this is a you're gonna love this. <laughs> what he did was he went to Fiverr, recorded his own music. And then claim, and then put his own music in his video. Then claimed his own music in his video, so other people couldn't claim music in his video. That's yeah, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Insane, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so what ended up happening was the YouTube system actually just um, um, split the claims, so there would be multiple different sources of revenue. So if half, if one part of the video is some hip hop song. Another one is like an EDM track and they're both claimed by separate. YouTube should be able to split that from within the system and figure that yeah, out. Yeah, because I remember it was yeah. like a few years ago where like if you had a copyrighted claim that you didn't think was legitimate, you would dispute it and the money that the video generated would just kind of be put in like a hold, a held account or whatever. And then once it was figured out, you know, the dispute was over, it would go to whoever they deemed to be, you know, the yeah. winner of the dispute. And, but and then, now they split, they split somewhere. multiple, they can split it multiple ways. Well, there's a difference between an actual claim on a video and, and, a, a, and a content ID match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so a claim, I think, um, is like 100% of the income goes to that person. And, and so I just had a video get claimed that got like 40K views with, to you guys is like, oh, that's not, you know, like that's, those are, those are rookie numbers. But like, uh, to me, it's it's significant. So I got 40k views on a on a, a Ludwig video, which is like, uh, and it was called the fastest growing streamer on Twitch. It was a four and a half hour video about just talking about like Twitch meta and like growing stuff. Uh, and then like 16 seconds got claimed, and 100 percent of my revenue. Of a four a and a half hour video. <laughs> four and a half videos, 16 seconds got claimed. And I was like, cool. <laughs> yeah. That was really. F <laughs> so that could Sorry. still happen. Yeah. I mean, have you have you tried like cutting that 16 seconds out or? So we had to go through my entire channel, and that was an outro, and that was a copyright free outro, but people can claim it anyway. Yeah, because and then like the process of claiming it, even if it gets disputed, the income goes over. So we ended up just um, going through every single one of the videos on the channel. And just now I don't have an intro and an outro like with any. Kind yeah, of music that stuff just seems like going. such a mess. I just like to yep. avoid. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And wow. like, I, I, I think we're going to see more of that on Twitch happen too. like. But what's going to happen first is like people are going to get banned. Like if you're if you're it's so crazy to me that there is people in the top like a thousand streamers. And you're streaming top fifty. Yeah, like, I'm. I'm. Like, I'm. In, I'm incredibly jealous. <laughs> like streaming on YouTube. Like I'm not allowed to like do any like copywritten stuff. And it's like technically, technically it would just get claimed. But because I had like the deal, like they would really prefer me to just not. Like I don't use any copyrighted music. So I use like my friend's music. He started a record label where he allows any of the music under that record label to be on YouTube royalty free. They don't claim anything. So I'm like, oh, I just use my friend's music. I don't really have that much music. But yeah, I'm pretty jealous to be able to just like stream whatever you want and just be jamming out to like all the top songs i mean that That'd the nice. problem is like until it twitch until, until into, it bites them i guess uh, but. yeah until it buries you because the, the system on twitch is so vicious man like if you get three copyright strikes on twitch um you're just you just are gone forever and you can never ever come back until you somehow find a way to get those copyright strikes removed legally which is hard like so like Twitch also, and like YouTube will be like, I think after like six months, there's some amount of time where like they'll remove strikes. Yeah. 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 Basically, if you, if you get like two strikes, you just have to like go completely down, quiet guys. for like six months <laughs> and let one of so, them go away. Yeah. So imagine doing that on Twitch, except they never go away on Twitch. Yeah. They never remove those strikes. If you have an account, if you have a strike on your account from 2010, you still have it. And is that a strike for anything like not just copyright, but just community guidelines? Like do they have that too. Uh, those do stay on your account as well. Um, and, but, but there's like a little bit of like subjective interpretation in it. So like if, a, if, if a trust and safety person reviews your account and you've got like two or three infractions from like six years ago, their decision to ban you is like probably not going to be based on that. It's, it, it's not going to have that much impact, but with copyright strikes, um, it's the process is all automatic because it has to be through DMCA. So like you just get banned forever and there's nothing you can do. <laughs> Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It hasn't happened to many top Twitch streamers yet, but a lot of people are on like their second strike, 
and right. they're like super afraid of like 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 Twitch just went through a whole like exodus of DMCA. Like, yeah, I remember seeing like stuff whole... about that, but then I mm -hmm. but then I hop back on Twitch and whoever I'm watching is still just playing all the copyrighted stuff, and I'm just like, man, I just I've been just conditioned from YouTube to like that that's terrifies me. I don't want to deal you don't want to deal with copyright stuff. You don't want that problem because I, no. I like I said I've we've literally had friends like get sued for like a bunch of money just because they oh, had yeah. a video that got claimed and yeah. No, no I don't I don't know why you'd bother like my policy on YouTube and streaming is always just like play by the rules like these platforms are so much bigger than us and they have nothing to lose right and like uh, so much of us so much of what we do is dependent on them it's like why just poke the bear yeah I've you tried know, to like, fight back on stuff like you know like but the whole demonetization stuff on YouTube right like I I just hate censoring myself I just want to be who I yeah. am and, and you know yeah. obviously I'm not here to like try and offend anyone or anything but like I curse, I say outlandish things, me and my friends make vulgar jokes and whatnot in our videos. I don't want to have to censor myself just because that's how I grew my platform, that's what I want to continue to do. But at the end of the day, like, I've learned to kind of give up on some of that because you do just have to follow the rules. Like, you know... And with, ultimately... Sorry. No, I was just saying, like, with YouTube, you just can't, like, you can't have that stuff in, like, the first minute of your video. So, like, exactly, I, I've censored exactly. the first minute of my video now on pretty much every video. I don't get a whole lot of complaints about it because it's become a pretty regular thing. But, mm -hmm, right. you know, if you would ask me to do that like a couple years ago or whatever, I'd be like, no, I don't want to censor any of my video. Like, it's stupid. But, yeah. You, Ultimately, you know. too, it's not even up to tw YouTube, you know? That's what a lot of people, yeah. I think, don't realize. It's like, this is what the this is the categories that the advertisers will pay for. Yeah, they're being strong-armed by the advertisers. Like, yeah, really and, 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 and it's, it's, it's really, really when it comes down to it, it's like 65 to 70-year-old people that are in Fortune 500s that, that sit in a room. And I've been, I call them Death Star meetings. I've been in these in esports <laughs> where like you're tr you're trying to you're literally trying to convince like 25 people in suits in a room why and, and like s like I'm not going to mention any brands obviously but there's like like imagine like a Fortune 500 brand and they're looking you dead in the face and they're like tell me why I should sponsor something where in Call of Duty it says terrorists win and like you have to explain well okay no one actually thinks they win they just it's just a thing that you say <laughs> at the end but they're not really that. They're just sort of, you know, ambiguous. And, and they're, it's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so you're out. Like, esports wonders why they're out, like, these multi million dollar deals. And I, I, have a, I mean, I have a lot to say about this if this is like a road we ever want to go down. But, like, um, esports on a whole is still massively behind in sponsorships. They have some big names like uh, Coke and the LCS. But, like, what a lot of people don't realize is that. Although those names are representing, they don't discuss that deal value. So it's very possible for a Fortune 500 to go in and sponsor one of these guys for a hundred thousand dollars a year, and they do it because they, like the LCS, will take that. I'm not saying that's what the deal value is, but I'm saying like the LCS would take a deal like that at a lower deal value because they would, um, they would want a, that kind of name brand, right? Because that they say, oh look, like Fortune 500 to sponsor us. So a lot of the Fortune 500s that are in esports and that are in advertising right now on places like YouTube, they're getting better, but their their advertising spend relative to their like non-digital spend is still like incredibly low. And uh, another thing that people I think um, that this might be interesting to you guys because this is directly relevant to YouTube ads. Digital ad spending is down like 30% across the board uh, this year, and, and, and it shouldn't have been because. Digital advertising should have gone up because we lost traditional marketing. Yeah, as a digital, vehicle. yeah, e-commerce and <clears throat> yeah. online brands so, and stuff is what's doing well. That's, but it that's didn't. weird. It, digital advertising across the board went down and spending went down across the board, and there was a lot of contraction. And I actually don't know why this is. I just know that it is. I, don't I haven't. I haven't seen that from my personal experience. Like I've. I feel like I'm getting more brand deals right now than I ha than I ever have. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of the game companies I'm working with are like doing well and feel pretty confident. I definitely did notice like, you know, the beginning of like the COVID lockdown stuff, like the first month, like first couple months, like March, April, kind of May, that brands were definitely like very weary. But mm -hmm. in the past few months, I feel like I've, me and most of my friends have gotten more, I guess from just an influencer marketing side of things with game companies specifically, that we've gotten more deals now than would we it, would normally. Influencer marketing is a really, really, really small subsection of digital marketing. Right? Yeah. So you've got like you've got like traditional advertising that's like billboards, stadium advertising, TV, uh, anything like that, radio stuff like that. It's like the lion's share of marketing expenses. Though digital advertising has passed in some places, like tech companies, has passed traditional advertising, but in a lot of places it hasn't. 
Then you have when we consider digital advertising, we're thinking about like Facebook ads, like Google ads, um, like non non YouTube, but sometimes YouTube, like sometimes they're in that carousel. Um, we're thinking about like banners. We're thinking about like email, like all that kind of digital ad spending, that kind of marketing. And then influencer marketing is like influencer marketing, like as a whole is like a 10 to like $15 billion industry. Like real, so, so to give you like some kind of perspective, like relative to that, Google last quarter made $30 billion on ads in, in, in a fourth of a year. So, so, like, <laughs> <Anthony>. the, the, <laughs> so, so, so influencer marketing as a whole and like get like the brand deals that, that you guys get and things like that are, is really small compared to like, um, the digital advertising footprint. It's growing. Right. But, uh, but, but like looking at macroeconomic trends is still like relatively very small. That, that number yeah. just blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's totally insane. It's, uh, and I, I think right now, if you are a product or service-based business, Google and Facebook ads are absolutely the best ROI, period. Like, um, they, they kind of have been for a long time. Uh, they're just the best price thing. And, and then there's like, there's some Instagram crossover in that. Um, it, and I, I think that's going to be the trend for a long time. And so like companies are going to keep switching over to what, from like digital advertising. And like, that's part of the, what, what my agency does, right? Is like, we, we help people make that transition. But yeah. <clears throat> so what what all does Nerd Fusion do then? Is it is it a lot of influencer marketing or is it just all digital marketing in general? I guess if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So so we have two arms really. The first is like the one that people know us for is like we manage influencers. Mm -hmm. So we manage influencers on Twitch and YouTube, and we do um, we do brand deals for them. We 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 uh, it's like the standard agency deal. Yeah. Um, though we we started we started. Um, the, the difference, I think, between Sevedus and, and myself, like Matt, is that we're both broadcasters and we're both active influencers, which is really rare. And, and well, it's so rare that we're the only two people to do it. Like, there, there's literally no other agent that, that's like a, a broadcaster um, on any consistent basis. And we, so we really wanted to start an agency because we saw all of the kind of like unethical stuff that's going on, like a lot of the like cutting off the top of deals, like a lot of like, um, uh, people not telling people like what they're worth or, or, um, like, like exploitation and stuff like that. Kind of similar to what you guys saw with like MCNs and like, um, like the 2000, like, like 12, 13 range. Oh yeah. Like, Luckily I, did, I didn't get caught up too bad and all that, but yeah, that's good. Yeah. But you remember it. I mean, like it was, it was a lot of people that were like giving up like 30 or 40% of their YouTube revenue. Um, and you're kind of like to some MCN, it's not even doing it. They're like, oh, we'll put you in premium ads. Like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, that, you know, was, like, that, was, that was me for a couple years, but I know some people had it worse. I think my first yeah. deal, I was technically getting like 67.5% of like my that's ad nice. revenue. And then yeah, eventually I got that to 90. Now it's a hundred. And now I know most people don't even go through an MCN anymore. No. Yeah. yeah. And it's like that. And like, it's like the only MCNs that were really valuable were ones that would provide you like pretty much like what an agency or management company would do. Like they would mm -hmm. provide you a lot of like third party services or tertiary services that could help you. And so we're seeing that same kind of thing happen in live streaming now where like um, right now is sort of the MCN period of Twitch where like Twitch, YouTube live streamers are getting these insane agency deals where there's people taking 30 or 40% of every deal or they do a deal directly with um, the brand. And what happens is, so the streamer does a deal with the brand and, or sorry, excuse me, real important. The agency does a deal with the brand. Then the agency chops that LPs, up. Yeah. LPs that deal out to the streamer for half the deal value. The broadcaster never sees the deal that went over yeah. the top. And so they think they're making, so if you, if I, if I tell you like, Hey, I got $10,000 for you um, this month, you might think, wow, that's a lot of money. Well, maybe I sold you for 90. Yeah. Right. No, so, I definitely, like, I definitely, I'm sure I'm almost positive. That there's some brands that like I work with and other people have worked with that do exactly that. I know that there's like agencies where they'll cut a deal with a big company, whether it's a game company or whatever, and they'll take that deal. Anthony, <laughs> Anthony knows exactly where I'm going and they chop it up, they chop it up and then they dish it out to as many people as possible. And I, and I get the model, but yeah, it yeah. definitely happens. So we started an agency <laughs> to stop that like, and to increase transparency across to influencers. So that's the first thing we do. And then the second thing we do, which is a, a bigger aspect of our business, is we have like a live studio, which is 2,500 square feet, three stages, um, bunch of camera stuff that we don't need and all kinds of shit. And uh, then like, it, it like, it was just like just a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And we do creative solutions for brands. So we work with everyone from like sci-fi to like um, Hershey's to like um, brisk iced tea, like all kinds of people. And so like if, if a brand comes in and says, how do I speak gamer? Like we're like, 
okay, here's how. And like, we'll do advertisements. We'll do influencer campaigns. We'll invite people in to fly them at like we used to do a lot more. Uh, now with uh, yeah. we had to shut down the studio <laughs> yeah. for the last couple of months for obvious reasons. But so now we're just doing like more of, but it's reopening and like people are coming back in and stuff and we're doing more digital activations. So it's mainly two things that we do. Okay. That's sick. Cool. Mm-hmm. I didn't that's know actually like my full time. Like, stuff too. What's that? I didn't know you guys had like the actual live space as well. That's really cool. Oh yeah, dude. That's like, so that's where I am right now. Like we've got like a whole like setup and everything. And it's like, it's really cool to have a studio. Cause like, if I want to go like build a computer or something, I just like go over there and like, we turn on all the lights and we have a full-time studio manager that's here every day. And yeah, it's like, most people think that I'm a full-time content creator because I, I have the numbers for it. Right. Like that they're, they're like, Oh, like you must stream on Twitch full time. Like, like Twitch is like less than 10% of what I do. I stream yeah. like 13 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. That's about, that's about where I'm at. So yeah, I mean, that's I mean, about how many hours I do as far as streaming. D- maybe you can confirm or deny this for me. I think that YouTubers on a whole get to work a lot less than streamers do. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, like, it, well, depends. it depends. It depends. It depends on the YouTuber. Because like, if you uh, have that... if you have people that are taking care of the post work for you, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. But then there's a lot of that evens out with administrative things and other things to like fill your mind with business ventures like if i'm not doing my own editing now i'm worrying about merchandise or the podcast so yeah maybe the work isn't necessarily youtube but no i'm not doing it. so yeah. who's that on one YouTube. youtuber that's uh the german kirch get kirch get that guy the, the guy does the the insane animations oh okay, yeah you, i know what you're talking about it's like Kur- Kur- kurjat or something yeah Kur- so anthony yeah. you may have seen these videos but the guy does like crazy like like, what if aliens existed, or what if aliens visited us? And like these, they're these crazy animated videos that are like 15, 20 minutes long. Yeah, the dude has to spend tons of time on those. That's There's one no of way. Those where it's like, I would believe that that dude is like, well, he actually in one of the videos it was like four hundred hours of like posts between his team. He has like a ten person team. Like, okay, but then well, like I think about like voice <laughs> critical. And I'm like, Charlie oh, he's, not, he's knocking like, out those videos five, in 10 to 15 minutes. Charlie's sometimes. post time is yeah. just however long it takes to render. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, like Charlie's like waking up at 2 p.m. and he's like, it's time to talk about Bigfoot. And then he's like, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like, and that was that was one of the big reasons we wanted to talk with him is because like just that carefree kind of like mentality to it. Like I feel like some of that there's there's positives to both. There's positives to having a whole big production team and having this crazy, well produced video that has a lot of time investment into it but there's also a lot to be said about a video like charlie's where it's just a dude hopping in front of a camera like youtube was intended to be 10 years ago or whatever and i think there's definitely appeal to both and that was one of the reasons we wanted to talk to him is because that dude has always had like the biggest most carefree attitude when it comes to youtube like early on he was donating all of his ad revenue to like charities and stuff and it was just like it was really interesting to see because in in this day and age where there's so many youtubers that have crazy production value and treated as a business and have little companies around everything that he's just like, yeah, I want to talk about Bigfoot today or, oh, there was, I saw a funny video of this Karen at the supermarket going ballistic over some pizza and just, right. yeah, he just throws it on and he's killing it doing really well. So yeah, the authenticity yeah. is really refreshing. I think, I think, I think you see so much that's like people going for the hustle and for the chase. And, and, and that I think is one of my best pieces of advice on content creation actually is like, I think if you s- this is something I, I discovered in esports. Okay, um, there's about a hundred players in the league championship series, right? Like ten teams, so you know, give or take some some other people on the roster, things like that. And one of the most amazing things I got to talk to every single player, like every single like, like for about four years, I still talk to a lot of them. Every pro that ever went through League of Legends and Counter Strike and like a bunch of other places, I have talked to. I have never met in that entire time a single person that when they were young, they were like, my dream is to be an LCS pro. I'm going to make it right. They did it because they spent 20,000 hours absolutely poop socking that game (laughs) with like a focus on getting better. (laughs) And then they got scouted. Right. And in the same way, I very rarely meet like on YouTube. It's a little bit more common because like, like people it's, it's been around longer and it's just Mm -hmm. like, there's, there's some people that like, but man, like the number of Twitch streamers in the top like 500, well, there's it's zero, right? Like I go talk to XQC or Asmongold or any of these people, and I'm like, did you like set out to be a full time Twitch streamer? No, like like they set they, they set out like Charlie did, right? They 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 log on because they wanted something to be in the world that wasn't there, and so they started doing it. And it's like you're already at such a huge disadvantage if you're starting out because you want to chase like the hustle and the clout and everything. Like you just want it because you see 
what other people are doing. You think the money is good. You think the fame is like going to be rewarding. And then you go after it. Like the best thing you could do as a content creator is like, what do I want to see in the world that isn't there? And that fact pisses me off. I'm going to create that. Yeah. That's like, mm -hmm. I was, I was telling you earlier, like I get asked that question all the time of like, I want to do YouTube or whatever. That's always like my short answer while I'm streaming, like my short bit of advice. I'm like, if you want to do it because you want to get popular, it's probably just not going to happen. But if you yeah, want to do it because yeah. you're going to have fun, then do what, you know, make the videos you think are going to be the most fun, have fun doing it, do it in your spare time, you know, put as much into it as you want. But yeah, if you're, if you're going into it with like, I want to get rich and famous and I want to be a YouTuber, like, it's just not going to, you can't, you can't force it. It's not something that's forced. And I know like for myself and Anthony, neither of us started it with the intention of wanting it to turn, like even make any money. I didn't even start it because I wanted to make any money. I knew back then that people were doing it full time. I didn't know money was being made. I just was doing it because I had enjoyed making videos in like a high school media class and I enjoyed video games and along this journey in like 2011, I just saw people making videos of video games. I'm like, oh, that's two things I like and I just started doing it. I think that's definitely the case for most large YouTubers, but yeah, it's been around long enough now that there's definitely some people who are just like, yeah, I want to be a YouTuber and then they made it happen, but very rare, very rare. Yeah, it's tough. hundred percent, yeah. And, and on Twitch, it's even more rare than that because on YouTube, you can follow a kind of rubric and a, and a set of guidelines that like if you follow, it will take you somewhere. But on Twitch, there isn't that kind of formula because Twitch is not a platform that you can start from zero on and grow on. It's a platform that like at this point in time, you need third party, you need tertiary platforms to drive your viewership because you're not going to be able to get discovered even at a large level. Like, and I'm talking like a thousand viewers or more, which so, so like to give some like incredible perspective on this, right? There are 5.8 million people that broadcast every month. That's uniques, right? 5.8 million people broadcasting. 5 million this is just people, Twitch, just Twitch, just Twitch. Yeah. 5.8 million God. people that broadcast. That's a person that turns on their stream. But out of that, right, there's only 40,000 people that are actually partnered with Twitch. So that, those would be people that are being considered to make anywhere close to full-time income. But Twitch never removes partners from their partner program unless they get banned, meaning that the vast majority of those partners are inactive. So already that cuts out like 30,000 people, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like that cuts out like 30, 35,000 people. So you're left with like 5,000 people out of 5.8 million that are making any kind of discernible income on Twitch, which is such an incredibly low number that like even, and then because the saturation is so high, if you're trying to start a stream and get discovered, it's insurmountable. And so you have to drive traffic from other platforms to be able to actually have like a like a twitch stream like it, it's funny too that it's like um my twitch stream only really started exploding um i i really back in the day like in 2012 i used to like have like 3,000 concurrence playing like um, league of legends which at the time was like a really high amount but there was no saturation back then and i had a lot of ins i was like featured by riot games like i had i got really lucky and these days my like when i restarted my twitch channel when i came to seattle which was like 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 beginning of 2019, I had like 50 viewers, and I, I didn't really get to the point it is now until I started YouTube. And if and if I, and if I just go through my chat and I'm like, hey, how many of you guys found me from YouTube? Like the chat just spams. Like it's just like we're all here from YouTube. Like you know, like it's like yeah, because that's that's how it works now. It's like um, you can't get discovered even if you're a decently large streamer um, on Twitch. It's just not a thing. Yeah, that's interesting. So I mean, I think a lot of people don't realize that, myself included. Yeah, because I don't yeah. really ever look at Twitch. I only ever approach Twitch these days, honestly, as a consumer, someone who's looking and watching videos. And I've never tried to stream outside of YouTube, so it was never difficult for me to grow. Mm -hmm. I had to go on YouTube and be like, "Look, I'm on Twitch," and then hundreds of people show up, and it was that simple. So yeah, I've never actually had to try to from the ground up grow a Twitch channel. I did with YouTube, obviously. It's not like I just appeared with 600 viewers out of nowhere, but it's. I had no idea that discoverability on Twitch was not a thing. Non-existent. Whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, I mean, so your, your advice to, to someone wanting to start out on Twitch is start out on YouTube or just other platforms in general. Like, you know, what about like, I'm trying to think like TikTok. Obviously, now it might be yeah. getting banned Let's or whatever. But that. like, but is Instagram, that... Instagram, though. I'm, it's, inter I'm, it's introducing. Yeah, Instagram, stuff, TikTok. Media. Like, how do those kind of play right. a factor because i always was curious like I, I saw a lot of you know you have like tim the tap man and a lot of the top like twitch streamers like trying to put stuff on tiktok 
And I never understood it because I always saw TikTok as like the platform where you get some discoverability there and then convert those people over to, you know, your YouTube, your Twitch stream or whatever. I mean, is that the case? So, but So there's a couple of, this is a great question. Like, so there's a couple of considerations that we want to make basically two considerations right number one is what's the conversion rate you just nailed it right which is how many users can i expect to get over to the thing where i want them to be what i would consider to be my core community whether it's youtube discord twitch whatever and that's number one and then number two is how monetizable is the platform that i'm on so you typically want to move people from less monetizable platforms to more monetizable platforms makes sense right so on that list the YouTube advice that I give is really specific because YouTube is the, the best combination of those two things. It's the highest monetizable, but also most conversion oriented platform. And it only goes downhill from there. The second most convertible platform is Instagram. So Instagram, um, you can do swipe up stories and they're very effective at driving users. Um, but as a percentage of your total follower base, it's still only going to be like three or 5%. But if you have hundred K people, that's not nothing. Right. Yeah. That's that, that's, yeah. that, that adds up. Cause I've always kind of played around with that with my, my own Instagram of like, I don't, my Instagram is basically just like kind of like little snippets of like in real life stuff. Like I don't post like video clips over there. I don't post like mm -hmm. highlights and I've always thought maybe I should do that, but we played around with like doing uh, like a swipe up in a story every time I upload a video, but it just seemed like it was pretty negligible on the amount of people that yeah. one even watched and two would swipe up like like if I posted a story of me doing something just out in my day to day, it would get way more interaction than me posting a video clip saying new video swipe up or whatever. Just seemed like it wasn't wasn't part as worth the is, effort. But part of that is you have to communicate in the way. That, so all these platforms have different ways of communicating yeah. with their endemic user base. Yeah. And, and so a lot of times people will do stories and they'll be like, I made a swipe up story like story about like a call to action. It didn't work. And I'm like, well, have you been doing consistent stories for the last two months? Like, have you built the user base to train? So that, that's a part of a thing. But like um, from Instagram, like Instagram typically has like the best conversions outside of YouTube. And then the what you good? <laughs> <laughs> Got in a fight that with a, my mic, man. It happens. That was, that was a close one. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the second one from there is typically Twitter. Um, so Twitter, the problem with Twitter is the engagement time. So from you, from the time that you post a, a, a post on Twitter, on average, your engagement will be seven to 14 minutes, meaning you're, you're going to reach your peak engagement. Um, the most amount of retweets, the most amount and of, and then it's buried. Yeah. It's very, and then that's very, 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 very short term. Like 14 minutes is a incredibly low amount of time. Instagram is 90 minutes. Facebook is 68 minutes. Twitch, which is the highest of all, is 110 minutes as of last year. So the engagement on Twitter being so short means that if people don't see your tweet in that window, they probably won't engage with you. So you have to have a lot of followers for it to be effective. And then from there, TikTok is the worst in terms of conversion because so I was so big on TikTok, man. I even ran a contest. Um, I did a $500 contest in my community for the people that could grow the biggest TikToks. So I was so interested in a social media platform. And that data informed what I'm about to tell you now, which is that TikTok is basically useless as a platform for conversion users. And the reason for that is, I think, twofold. Um, you can get a, a crazy amount of followers. Like I had people that got followers, like 100K followers overnight. Um, the problem with it is, that when you try to convert those followers to any sort of discernible call to action, watch a video, buy a product, do anything like that, they're just yeah, they're like, like that they're dude. like, nah, I want to watch like, the next TikTok. I want to go see like some mm -hmm. some dude like break dance or something or whatever. Yep. Like, it's just it's that gift <laughs> yeah. where they just like peace and they fade out of existence. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's it, it's like they're just not there. And I think the reason is because it's that six second goldfish attention span mentality. Um, but also just like it's a very young demographic. It's users that are, are are like a lot of times like 12 years old and their loyalty is like very small. Like they're just like, ah, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to like, yeah. I'll watch this person's content, but I'm not like invested in the personality. I'm invested in the subject matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause I, yeah. I, as TikTok was like blowing up and I saw like all these people like making TikToks, I'm just like, man, it just doesn't seem like a, a good use of my time. I was like, I'd rather focus on, you know, the platforms I know that work and whatnot. And it's just. Especially like making the, goofy TikToks that have nothing to do with my typical content. Yeah, because the content like, I don't get anything, that. Exactly. Yeah, I don't get that. You have to make content totally different from what your your typical content is to be appeal on TikTok. And then if you want to convert those users over, they're not used to your other content. Yeah. You want to know the platform that everyone's sleeping on? What is it? No, I'm curious. LinkedIn. LinkedIn? Yeah. I have I a LinkedIn. I don't do anything on it. 
I am a hundred percent convinced that you can build a full blown gaming brand on LinkedIn. A hundred percent convinced. You mean like gaming, like like streaming, or like like a like, you do. like a video brand? Yeah. Yep. Straight up. Okay. And here's why. All I'm right? curious now. I don't think okay. I, I don't yeah. believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> I'm skeptic. I I I I feel you. Okay. So LinkedIn is close to a billion users now. Okay. And their number one goal as a company is they are so right now they've always been known as the professional website here you put your resume here you link up for jobs and this sort of thing so linkedin has had an enormous problem with keeping people on the website for long periods of time because people just go on they look for jobs and they peace out right so their time on platform is very low compared to youtube twitch other websites like that and for that reason they aren't monetizing well the the, the advertising is is lower there's a lot of problems with like trying to, like basically the longer that somebody's on a website or on an app or on anything the more shit you can throw at them so the more yeah. stuff that you can make money off of them with right so to solve this problem linkedin has built an entire social media network that shares content across the whole platform to put this into perspective, the first thing that I ever posted on LinkedIn was zero following. Got It was a YouTube video. It got 5,447 extra views to my YouTube video without ever having a single follower on LinkedIn. That was my first post. So how, is it like an embedded YouTube video or, the, or they, they had to click something to go to YouTube to watch yeah, it's it? it's just an embed. Yeah, you, you just embed it in your post. And uh, the post works the same as like Facebook does. Like, right, you can post videos, you can post, uh, you can post anything you want. The thing is that the sharing, so, so it's a combination of things. Number one, it's so not saturated. There's just no one there that's creating content that when like LinkedIn sees someone create content, they're like, ah, show it to everyone. <laughs> like, 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 right, like they just go freaking crazy. And, 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 like, so that's like one. And then like number two is that um, the share function, they're so desperate to get this stuff out there that it just goes everywhere. So, so like you will blow up across LinkedIn and your, um, and if you get any sort of engagement whatsoever, like, like one person is just like, mm, they click the like button. It's like, uh, they love it. And it just goes crazy. And <laughs> it, it, so like, I, I am a hundred percent convinced if all you do is like you embed YouTube videos on LinkedIn and you build a gaming brand from the ground up, you'll, you'll grow on YouTube like 90%, 100% faster. Same I want to, I want to see everywhere. somebody who's listening to this do it. I want to see it done. Yeah. Circle mm -hmm. back to us in I'm four months. I'm going to go make a LinkedIn account right now. <laughs> People are sleeping on it really hard. Um, it's oftentimes a lot of the platforms that nobody talks about that are the most effective. Like, think about the people that got into Vine at ground level, right? That's your Logan yeah. Pauls of today. But yeah. everybody thought it was dog shit back in the day. Everyone thought it was dumb. When Vine came out, I was a manager in retail, and I yeah. used it to shoot six-second videos of me fucking around at work. Like, <laughs> I managed an office depot. So I would I would literally like Set I would have just like stacks of like boxes from like aisle end caps and stuff like that in the back yeah. where we had to dispose them. And mm. I'd be like, I was told to dispose of these. And it just cuts to me like swan diving on top of these boxes. <laughs> and it did fucking great. I love it. There's like one video. I, it's still to this day. I wish I could have gone back to my vine and found it. But I'm like, Monster Energy has strange effects on me. And I like take a sip and then it cuts to me, Devin. And I'm like shitting myself in a store like ripping the most ridiculous fart and people oh thought God. it was the most amazing video ever uploaded like it had when, it when was the dumbest i'm trying to think if i like, saw this video did i know you back when you were insane. making these this was probably like around the time that we met like 2011 2012 <laughs> Like, I was like, you know what? I'm just a goofy guy named Big Jiggly Panda. I make videos on Call of Duty once every three months. I use Vine to show what I actually do outside of YouTube because I had, like, a following. Like two, three thousand people at that time. But with Vine being such a new platform, I was like, this is a cool way to show people, like, a different side of us. And I did the most ridiculous stuff with it. And people ate it up. I actually miss Vine. I don't miss what it created. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the monsters. <laughs> yeah, that's why but, I don't. So you don't see that same thing that happened with Vine happening with like TikTok, though. Like, I mean, it, it definitely has, though, right? Some of the top TikTok creators are definitely like doing well on like YouTube and stuff, right? But is it really only, some, is it only just that? Vanished. Yeah, is it only just that like the top, top performers on TikTok that have managed to like, I don't even know. Well, I don't watch Lele a whole Pons, lot. For example, she was huge transition to youtube was huge and now it's like i don't i don't remember the last time i've heard her name was she like, from wonder, tiktok 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure out of the loop on TikTok. TikTok. I just something about that platform. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know? Do you know about Lele Devin? Is yeah. she? I don't know where she's at on YouTube, but I know that like a lot of the, one of the big things is like this is actually we might have some like kind of like cognitive bias here because I think actually a lot of old creators on YouTube just in general are 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 no longer like I don't know if relevant is the right word, but just like creating content on like a consistent basis. Um, either just because they've been in the game too long or because they weren't able to like adapt to like the new meta. So, so like YouTube has been around long enough now that we're seeing like a lot of people that had maybe million subscriber channels just sort of like blink. Oh, out of existence I see it. Live, I've, like, I've seen it yeah. all the time. I mean, as someone who's mm -hmm. literally been a part of it since 2011 and doing it full time since 2013, like it's, people I see I it. I see it all are no longer. Yeah. I see it all yeah. the time where I'm just like, man, that dude was killing it when I was starting or back when I was, you know, back in these years, that dude was like, killing it and now you know now they've, yeah. they've faded off for whatever reason it's always like stuck in the back of my head i'm like i don't want to do that i don't want to be like that <laughs> so but you haven't to... you, i mean that's that's one of the most impressive for things now you've been around for, this <laughs> for long, now man. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I you've think... already at this point stretched yours out longer than the people you won't say the names of have yeah i did and it's interesting too because you're doing it on i'd say like the model of like playing video games is getting more difficult and, mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting that this is happening too with twitch like with twitch just chatting as a category is growing 36% faster than any other category. So like to put that like into perspective, you might have like Fortnite, League of Legends, whatever like that. But like what people want to see on Twitch is like reacts content. It's actually, it's so interesting how you can literally parallel to YouTube's growth. Like, like Twitch is just a younger YouTube. It's like, like remember the reacts meta on YouTube? Yeah. When that was oh, everything, where? it was like, like grandma's react to dogs. Like, like just like, like <laughs> yeah. a million views, like instantaneously. Like, and then you get those old, like, oh, wow, wow, that's, that's a very cute dog. People just love it, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, like that was it. Like, you know, and, and like now Twitch is just going through the same thing. You've got a streamer sitting there and like they watch a YouTube video and then some, and they're like, mm. and then everyone's just like, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same thing. So, like, like I think, like the reacts meta is hitting and like the just chatting meta is hitting twitch super hard right now and gaming we're seeing a lot of these like older personalities that got started in like 2011 2012 ish on gaming on twitch they are kind of having the same model they kind of like have their webcam and then they've got their game and then they're playing their game and if you look at their stats over a long period of time like six to 12 months they're declining they're losing followers they're and, and, and like it's interesting to me because I looked into your channel quite a bit before this that like you're not doing that. You you you've managed to keep your side of the industry extremely relevant and 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 still grow, which is really impressive. Like given well, the, the changing meta. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think it's just me and my friends, my friend group. Because I mean, obviously, a lot of my videos, you know, I don't do any solo content really. It's all yeah. my, me and my friends. But we've just, I don't know. We've seen everyone who doesn't adapt. What happens? And I don't know. We we're pretty. Like I said, we're pretty spontaneous. You know, we don't get we none of us have gotten caught up in like a rhythm of doing the same thing over and over and over. And if, if we do, we all kind of, you know, we wake ourselves up or wake each other up. And I think we've been pretty good about, you know, kind of moving on game to game. Now, I do think, you know, obviously I haven't branched away from gaming at all, but that's just what I enjoy doing. I don't like I don't like really being in front of a camera and doing like goofy stuff in front of a camera. I don't want to go. I don't want to be a vlogger and go out and embarrass myself in public I and do it. wacky, crazy shit. It's just not. It's not me, but I I actually have this year. Actually, I talked to Anthony about this. I did consider like before COVID and everything, like if I ever got burnt out on games at some point this year, I'm like, Anthony, you, me, whoever else, let's just go travel somewhere. Let's go fly somewhere, whether it's in the US, some country, bring one cameraman and just follow us around just exploring, not necessarily making an ass out of ourselves and like forcing content, but mm -hmm. just having someone there recording everything because like we have a good time, obviously, no matter what we're doing. And I think just like, couple of goofy guys just exploring whatever new culture new area whatever would be interesting and that, that was one way i was planning on branching out a little bit another way was this podcast um but yeah gaming yeah. still very much has been i don't know it's just what i do i've always been playing games but um philip defranco just had a really good interview about this with matt pat and like matt pat talked a lot about like why he created food theory and and, and how like as a youtuber you have a, an interesting kind of problem uh, enigma really like just like this like like okay i've been doing this kind of content for a super long amount of time and i need to balance what keeps my studio lights on with 
like my sort of like desire to be like a creative human being and and, and continue to do like invent and, and expand and things that I love. And there's there's a lot of like I, I think like YouTube is like that transition is like starting new channels or doing things like that and and like experiencing that, especially because I think um like we mentioned before, you could you can outsource a lot of that to editors. You can outsource a lot of that like that that sort of post work, and, and then you can sort of explore those things. The, Matt Pat had like a really good take on this, where he's like, hey, "I started Food Theory because I I wanted to do something different than just like film and gaming, but I still wanted to do that stuff, but I wanted to do it like in the context of like something I thought was a whole another interesting thing." Mm -hmm. And Twitch streamers have that a lot harder because it's like if you're a League of Legends pro and you want to switch your community will not tolerate it. Like, yeah. like you will lose. Uh, like, I, I, I never, uh, to be honest with you, man, actually, it's still true. To this day, <laughs> even though at this point, like, I, I can confidently say I'm, like, one of the top industry leaders in terms of, like, like thought around Twitch and YouTube and, like, digital marketing. Um, even with the numbers that I have today, I'm still not at where I was when I played League of Legends full-time. Um, and like, as soon as I said, okay, guys, I'm switching to variety and I'm switching to do other stuff. I lost a 10th of my audience. Sorry. I, I went down to a 10th of my audience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I lost nine tenths of my audience <laughs> and that, and, the, and then I lost, uh, just about that amount of subs and I never got that back to this day. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we used to see that. So back in like the earlier days of YouTube, when we all started, everyone was uploading Call of Duty videos. That was like the main thing on game oh, yeah, on, on YouTube. Like it, was, it was Call of Duty. shots, the yeah. Hectors. Yeah, it was yeah, Call yeah. of Duty mm -hmm. and Minecraft. And you had people that just got so caught up doing Call of Duty over and over and were too afraid to ever branch out that when it finally came to a breaking point where they're like, all right, I need to switch up and do something else. They had built up such an audience that only wanted to see Call of Duty that they just couldn't. And I feel like me and, like me and most of my friends did a pretty good job of kind of transitioning at the right time when, you know, like GTA came out. That's really when we transitioned hard away from Call of Duty into GTA. Mm -hmm. Just and and a part of it is the group dynamic and that people don't really come for one person individually or one game individually. They come to see the group of friends like hanging out and having fun. And so that kind of translates well to just about any game. But at the end of the day, like a game has to be, you know, it has to be somewhat popular. Like I couldn't all of a sudden transition to I don't know, some like Valorant. I try to upload some Valorant. That game's just not popular in my community. If I made yeah. a hard switch to that for whatever reason, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. Uh, in the context of what you're doing, uh, have you ever met a, do you know a guy named Gaming Curios? Mm -mm. Okay, so this guy's like my best friend on YouTube. Um, he has 16 YouTube channels, okay? 16 channels? I got just he the has, one. Well, I did have a eight, second, but only one I upload. Eight on. silver play buttons. Um, I just have and, my one gold one over there. I'm pretty proud yeah, of it. Yeah, that's I, <laughs> like like I'm I'm like, dude, this guy is a is a madman. Um, what he does is he uploads like guide content, um, like uh, information content, and he ha every one of his channels is a separate game. Oh, okay, so yeah. So he'll have a Valorant channel. Yeah. So like that's the way to do it if you want to do it that way. But like if you are on brand with like I I imagine like things that do like really well for you um are things like uh minecraft or like among us or things like that like the, uh, like a recent addition yeah like a lot of like sandboxy yeah. stuff yeah uh, and then mm -hmm. modern warfare for whatever reason i guess it's just i'm pretty decent at the game and a lot of people in the game get really mad at me they talk a lot of shit <laughs> so, there's, so there's a lot of random interactions with like people we play against which minecraft can be funny but not good for my mental busted. health yeah my yeah minecraft yeah. yeah we we got back into it last year when like the boom kind of happened again where like pewdiepie started uh, uploading it me and my friends all kind of made a server together and a lot of people saw that as like my friend group kind of reuniting on one game again because we had been split mm -hmm. over the years like i was playing a lot of Fortnite. like anthony wasn't he never played that game except for this one sponsor video he got that i didn't get but hell yeah <laughs> but yeah it's so, like Good, we, had been, we had been I'm split we had been split we had been split years prior and then minecraft kind of brought us all back together and people were really excited about it and enjoyed it but you know it kind of came and went and whatever reason we went back to playing different games and stuff but i'm getting back into minecraft a little bit because i'm really fascinated by uh some of the other channels that have been like doing like custom mods and stuff and I, so I've hired like a couple of developers that are like developing whatever mod I want. So I just think of like something oh, so crazy. Awesome. Yeah. So I think of something yeah. crazy. Um, so actually one video that'll be going up before this is posted. So I can spoil it now. Uh, I got my friends to come <laughs> on. I said, Hey, I had these guys make a mod where creepers are invisible. And so we're going to play through the game. We're going to try and do whatever challenge objective, or whatever, but creepers are invisible. 
Well, what I actually didn't tell them was, yes, creepers are invisible, but I also made myself a mod where if I look at them and press a key, I make them explode to a creeper. And so I just blew them up for like an hour and a half and they were and they thought it was creepers the entire time. So they're going to and I still haven't told them. So they're going to upload their video thinking they were blowing up the random creepers the whole time. And then it's going to get to see my video where it's me intentionally blowing them up over and That's over and over. That's actually amazing content. So, yeah, oh my so God. I've been trying to think of like crazy stuff like that and I'm sure I can only get away so many times before they're never going to trust me and join a, a game with me again, but... 100%. <laughs> yeah, so like just the sheer like amount of crazy stuff you can do with Minecraft is what makes it so never-endingly popular. My, uh, my business partner, Matt, is a PhD in astrophysics and he built a mod called SevTech, which is like one of the most popular mods in Minecraft and it is truly bananas like you can build nuclear reactors you can like <laughs> like you can build like spaceships you can like you, like there's it is that dude's brain is like on a whole nother wavelength that guy is like I, i'm fucking like playing hungry hungry hippos and like that guy's playing like fucking 5d underwater basket weaving chess like, <laughs> like, like it, it, it's absolutely insane like you can go so nuts with minecraft like it, it and like people love to see it the whole twitch uh meta like when gaming like when twitch really kind of like got off the ground was based on minecraft and like a lot of the original broadcasters were based on minecraft and world of warcraft but like both of those crafts were like the the really big yeah. things that i think took, took twitch to the next level like in like 2000 like uh like in the early 2010s area yeah. area like like of like 2014 2013 ish yeah mm -hmm. i never really got too into world of warcraft but minecraft was always back in the day minecraft was always there but and i played it here and there but I didn't have a gaming PC. Everything I played was on console, and it was like no one cared about Minecraft on console back then. I mean, there definitely was, I guess, a bit of a market for it, but yeah. everybody wanted to see it on PC, and my uh, the, the Xbox version was always, like, behind a few updates, so you didn't even have all the stuff that, like, the PC wow. version had. So, if, you know, you had guys like CNanners uploading whatever the newest, latest update was for Minecraft. And then oh, if you were so to post, <laughs> yeah, if you were to post your stuff on, on, on the Xbox version, you were literally, like, six months behind on what the game was. Oh my but, god! Yeah, 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 man. Minecraft is like busted, and it, it's so it's so crazy because it's like it's like the the fountain of youth, man. Like it just it 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 just renews inevitably. Like you just continuously go back to that for content, and it's infinite. It's yeah. crazy. A yeah. lot of the Minecraft YouTubers have just survived every storm, every hurricane, every earthquake. Because you can like everything. you can like follow every trend still being underneath the umbrella of Minecraft, like whatever's popular, like pranks. It's like all right, well. Pranks in Minecraft, yep, like we, go. we got it, <laughs> like Battle Royale, whatever. Yeah, Battle yeah, Royale, like, Hunger okay, Games in Minecraft, yeah, yeah. And the CPMs are just insane because it's just like it's like well, not a mine, bunch of but <laughs> well, really? Well, I, I'm I'm you know I'm inappropriate, so my CPMs are oh, great. Oh, okay, because like the CPMs for Minecraft on like I'm like I I don't actually I haven't done enough research into like how much Coppa actually screwed up. I I think it screwed up a lot of things. It hasn't but, touched. Uh, but, it hasn't affected. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that affected channels that are actually like were for kids. Did you ever? Oh, well, I think it destroyed them. Have you ever seen what the CPMs were for those toy opening videos? Do you no, know about but those? I don't. I don't want to know because I know how many views they got, and I don't want to know how much money it translated to. <laughs> you have to know. It was like say it. I want to know. Yeah, it was like fifty dollars per R, like RPM. RPM. That's like better than like some sponsored deals with like dedicated oh, way, brands. Way better. That's yeah. insane. And, and the whole reason is because those kids would sit on an iPad. They would watch the entire video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then and watch then it again. <laughs> they would go to their parents and they'd be like, buy me this Elsa toy right now or I'm going to freak out. And, <laughs> yeah. they, and the dad's like, okay, okay. I'm so sorry. Like, right? And like he, they buy him the Elsa and then like, and a Disney saw that and they were just like, oh my God, like we got to do this. And so they dumped so much money into digital advertising and before Coppa, like that little dude, the Ryan kid, that that yep. little guy that had that was getting like, I don't know, like some he had like a billion view video, right? Something like that. Like yeah, that dude. Yeah, done. the dude got half a million views a month or a billion right, views a month, right. something at, ridiculous. At that CPM, like that kid is done. That kid is just like I mean, at that CPM, he probably ranked it enough to be fine for life already. Yeah, he he literally made he was literally one of the richest YouTubers before he even knew who he was. <laughs> He's gonna get. He's gonna get Macaulay Culkin. They're just gonna take all of his money. His parents. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, maybe. Like, 
<laughs> By the time no he grows idea. up, he's like, oh yeah, you were like a popular YouTuber. Didn't make any money though, but mom and I are doing all right. <laughs> yeah. What do yeah, you guys man, do? It was, it was crazy. Like some of the, um, I think a lot of people don't realize like how variable CPMs can be across different industries. I've just recently discovered like how good CPMs are for uh, financial channels on YouTube. Like Greg like, Stefan? Uh, yeah. Like apparently, Dude, yeah. apparently like he would make double or triple what we would on the same amount of views. Per month, Easy. which is insane. Was it Graham Stephan's video that actually showed you that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it was. Yeah. I, I think it was a video where he was talking to someone, and they discussed the amount of money they made on a certain yeah. amount of views, and he was like, "Oh, if that was on a financial channel, that would be three times that or whatever." And I was like, "Yeah, really? Yeah, dude." I kind of blew that, my mind. That I, I watched that same video. The way he said that was enough to create like a YouTube supervillain. Like, like, like when you watch it, you're just like, <laughs> "Ooh." What I've been making four <laughs> times less than that this entire time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then your next video is like seven tips to make ten thousand dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> How to invest in stocks. First your your, your first video. Yeah. No. <laughs> Financial channels are insane because they're propped up by a lot of people like uh, Robin Hood, like a lot of people that do a lot of digital advertising spend through there and the conversions are very high. And then you could expect them to spend a ton of money on the on those apps. So yeah. it's, it's some of the highest RPMs. It probably is the highest RPM on YouTube right now because of the kid stuff is gone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm in a really good category too. On my YouTube channel, I do um, industry like, like so gaming and then like a little bit above that for whatever reason is like gaming advice, industry advice, like industry stuff. And I get put in a business category and I just like, I'm slaying it, dude. Like if I, if I did more videos, I wish... Like I said, like I, I'm not a full time content creator, but if I was, ooh, like if I if I did like a vid like three videos a week, I would just be I'd just be like, like yeah, be so good, yeah, yeah, that would be really good. <laughs> How much time do you think you would have to set aside each week for that to happen? Like, um, is it is it feasible with everything else you have going on? Here's the or is thing: is it even worth the time? So like I'm so at CLG, I ran a company that was over a hundred people. And I'm busier now than I was then. And the reason is because I have really two like full-time things I'm doing, right? So like I have a staff here at the agency. I have direct reports. I have clients I got to do. But I also manage influencers directly. But I also am an influencer directly. So the, the you know what has, has like, this is like so crazy to talk about. But like my problem right now is mental bandwidth. So the um, amount of like thought that I have to put towards something is like, if somebody wants me to consult for them, I charge $500 an hour, right? And I get an average of about 20 requests a week right now. And I can't do any of them, not because like, could I carve out an hour and like talk to the guy? I could probably, but do, could, do, can I donate like my mental bandwidth <laughs> to like being able to like think about their problem and solve their problem and like, and then like, like work with them on it. I can't provide enough value. So that that's like where I'm stuck is like for me to like think about YouTube and like think about titling and think about the marketing and things like that. And I don't want to outsource it because I like, I want to understand that process and think about it. I just don't have the bandwidth to do it. it that, that's actually the problem I'm running into right now. It's like, I've, I've just got so much going on and the gears are turning. And also I think I value um, personal time. Like I play Eve online. Um, and I just enjoy it. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah. so, so it's like I could upload another. You're spending YouTube time to really enjoy good. yourself now. Like, what are you doing? What a waste of time. What's that? <laughs> I said you're spending time just to enjoy yourself. Like, what a waste of time, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Like, can you imagine? But it's like, so there's an interesting, like, there's an executive thing here, right? Which is like, um, I was actually talking to um, uh, my guest yesterday about this, and like, we were like, I have guests on the stream, and we do these deep dives, right? And uh, my guests yesterday were the, uh, the, the Botez sisters on Twitch. Like they're these um, chess prodigies that, that do like really cool content. And as it went, when you're, when you're an executive of a company, you're thinking in terms of things that are going to lower your effectiveness by percentage value. So like, for example, if I sleep four hours instead of eight hours, I get four extra hours of time, but I'm also... 30% less effective. Yeah, it's four shitty and, hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the way that translates is like, okay, if I'm making three out of 10 of my decisions more poorly, and these are multi-million dollar contracts, this is a big deal, right? And for that reason, a lot of top executives are 
her like look at like anybody like Jack from um from Twitter and Square, um, Elon, look at anybody that like that talks about this in interviews. They spend an enormous amount of time thinking about how to be effective. They sleep eight hours a day, almost all of them sleep eight hours a day. They eat very healthy food. Um, and more importantly, I think um Jack is a really good example for this because Jack will not work Saturday, Sunday ever. He doesn't eat from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He fasts. And he will like regularly go on 10 day Vipassana retweets or retreats where he um, meditates and doesn't say a word and doesn't bring his phone. He's a CEO of Square and Twitter, right? <laughs> and, and, he, and he goes on 10 day retreats and, and people go, why? Like he's not being an, uh, uh, well, because that effectiveness gets, gains him time. It, it, it gives him time later because his mental acuity and his, his mindset is so much more sharper as a result of spending that time. So a lot of the time that I take off is deliberate and and like total relaxation. I shut off all social media. I, I I completely zone out. I don't talk to anybody. I'm like a literal potato. So so that I can like embody that essence so that I'm ready to fire back and be at it at 100%. That's definitely been my approach recently too. And that was something mm. we were discussing before we, well, Tyler recorded it, before we really launched into this was how I've really sacrificed getting more content for my own sanity and like mental health. Like I know every day that I'm going to be tired at midnight and I can go to bed without a worry about missing mm -hmm. a video or something like that. And I wake up at 738. I get my day started. I eat, I shower, I'm fresh. It's like, well, I can create my own content because I don't, I don't mind doing solo. Tyler and I are different in our content in that sense. I actually thrive on solo more so than group stuff. But the mental approach each day, I feel so much because I sound like I'm crawling out of bed at noon and feeling like shit because my day is already halfway over or all these little like mental obstacles you have to dodge because of what you're saying. It's like you're there exactly. is no mental like there's there's you wake up groggy, you feel immediately defeated mentally because you've woken up in that scent or that sense or frame of mind. And then as you continue throughout your day, it's just like a negative downward spiral. Yep. And I've and I just, even in the last month, from going to bed at a decent hour, getting up, I just feel so much better. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it can be those little things. Like, <clears throat> a lot of people think about adding hours to their day, and they don't think about how to become more effective. Like, I never have any kind of required hours for anyone that works with me. Um, I've never had a staff member that I've ever assigned hours to. I, I they they can work as much or as little as they want, just on a just a key performance indicator system, like like system, like like how well are they accomplishing their objectives? And I have had a much bigger problem with asking people to not work as hard as they do um, than the other way around. And and you can see this in like this actually plays out. There's a really big study that was done um, at MIT, and they showed that the average amount of time that a person in an office works is an hour and 30 minutes a day. That is like the amount of time that someone sits down. They're and there for eight. Yeah, they're there they're for there eight, for, but that's the only amount of work. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. But the, 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 so the amount of hours that P, that Americans spend in offices is, is, is increasing, but pre COVID um, it like they would spend 10 and, and like, you know, all the tech companies are doing all this stuff. Like now we have lounges, we have kitchens in our offices. You can like, bring your dog showers, to work. Yeah, I've seen yeah, all this stuff. Why leave? <laughs> Never leave. Yeah, why, like why leave? Right. Like, and, and so you're stuck in this like like um dark dimension of like I I'm I'm at work and I kind of feel like I'm at work, but I'm not completely relaxed, and it puts you in this gray zone. So you're so that's why everybody in America is like ah, like because like, you're never actually totally relaxed, and you're never actually working. So you just feel like you're in this purgatory. That's, um, that's like the most, that's the most relate that's the most relatable thing ever i feel like that's so yeah. often where i'm like yeah. man i want to relax and then i relax i'm like i'm not really relaxing i'm thinking about this and this and this right. and then it's like while i'm doing something i'm like man i wish i was just chilling right now it's like oh well i'm not really actually getting what done i need to be getting yeah i'm i've definitely <laughs> spend a lot of time in that state of neither yeah it's not good and that's really why you get that. an office full circle <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, we I said like the, the driving thing earlier, I want to try that the walking situation, you know, mm -hmm. it helps me separate work from home when you work from home forever. Marijuana. <laughs> 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 I go downstairs into my basement, I smoke a joint and immediately. I'm just I'm not at work anymore because <laughs> who in their right mind gets blasted and goes to work like you have to function, you have to talk to people you can't be like. That's amazing. Slack jaw like a Neanderthal. 
<laughs> but as soon as the shrubbery is aflame, <laughs> I am no longer in work mode. I'm zinned out. I love it. I'm I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. Help. I might have to try that one. Yeah, <laughs> you should it. give it a shot. Just don't, you know. Someone I want to talk to at some point on the podcast is uh, Laserbeam. Are you familiar with him? Mm hmm. Oh, dude, the guy that got 900,000 uh, uh, unique viewers on, or 9,000 concurrent viewers on Fortnite. Yeah, basically, he's yeah. been blowing up on Fortnite for the past, like, yeah. three years, but like, he's been doing YouTube. I don't know the full story, and I, I, and I don't know him super well. I've met him a few times, um, but from my understanding is he did YouTube years and years ago and has been doing it for years and didn't really see much success and was, like, on the verge of, like, giving up, and then Fortnite happened, and his channel just blew up, just took off. And I know literally for the past like two years, according to him, like he just spends an insane amount of time working on his videos. He still doesn't he doesn't have an editor. He edits all of all the videos himself and he does like crazy videos that take just a ton of effort and uh -huh. he doesn't sleep a lot. Like he gets like four to six hours of sleep. He talks about it like all the time. And I just I don't I just want to talk to him and understand like how he can function because like I I can't do it. Like I have to get like seven to eight hours if I'm going to get up and be like entertaining and, you know, be myself for a video oh like, yeah i just can't Same. i just can't do it and i don't understand how 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 he can do it his videos are great it hasn't like you know his videos are good but i just generally like man how can you survive on that there's, you know there's like this mental space you could push yourself into i had exactly. to do it when i was on tour because i would be performing hop on a tour bus get miserable four five six hours of sleep wake up because i'm in a different time zone way too early and then have to go be on stage for three, four hours between Q and A's and performing. And it's like, it's possible. It's just, does he, does he, does he seem happy about it? Or is he saying it is like, like a struggle? Like, I don't, I don't like, know. I always Some, sleep four hours. Sometimes, like, Fuck! sometimes <laughs> I always slept four hours. Sometimes just the video starts. You just see his face. You're like, dude, he's been fucking at it for a minute. You're like, he's dying yeah. right now. But I mean, it's like I said, the videos it, are still good, but it's just, I just don't get like, I just couldn't do so, it. It makes you wonder I, how happy he is outside of the video, though. That's my takeaway. Because I enjoyed tour. I loved it. But every time I got home and I was like, I could sleep in my own bed for mm -hmm. five hours plus. Like, it was euphoric. Like, he does he take breaks? I, I think what you said in the beginning is I could provide a little bit of, like, value on this. Because, like, at CLG, I went to bed around 1 or 2 in the morning. And I woke up at... 530 every day for two years and your mental can push you through a lot and also i was really focusing on health i would go to hot yoga every day i would um i would uh, do jujitsu i would do like a lot of stuff that would keep my health up but at the and that was about three years and at the end of that three-year experience i honestly like like hand to god probably took me about nine months maybe longer of complete potatoing like just like <laughs> i just like wandered the earth to get back from that because like when you burn the candle at both ends like that your mental can push you really far but you accumulate a debt that that oh, then yeah. like comes back to haunt you at some point i think he probably feels like he's on his grind and this is his moment and so he's just gonna go all in yeah and that's that's that. that's really what yeah. it is yeah he's just like mm -hmm. he's he's just you know like i said he was spending years just not getting the viewership you know just wasn't having success and now yeah. that he's had it he's just like wants to capitalize on it and i definitely respect it it's just like i just don't I just can't function like the, that. Like you fear for the inevitable break that will happen. Yeah, and even something will break in somebody at any point, and then it's mm -hmm. how how hard is it to recover from that? Yeah, and even even with the way I go about things, where you know I try to get eight hours of sleep, I pretty much do every night, unless you know, yep, like I have same. a I have a big important trip or whatever, and like one night I might cram a lot and get only three or four hours of sleep before a flight or whatever. But for the most part, I get my sleep so that way I can function the way I want to function to make the videos the way I want to make them. But even mm -hmm. still doing that, like it becomes a build up after a while that like you know, once every couple weeks, there's just a day where I just, I'm like, I'm not doing anything today. I don't want to talk to anybody. don't want to see anybody. I'm going to be a potato on the couch. And I feel like those are good for full resets. And only recently the past like year or two have I really started to take like weekends off. Like I used to, you know, Saturday and Sunday were just another day. Like there was no days of the week. It was just today yeah. and then tomorrow. And then the next day they're all the same. Doesn't matter. I would be in my room, be at my house doing whatever. And only recently have I started to be like, all right, it's Saturday. Like I might do a few things, but it's Saturday. I'm going to go do something I enjoy or, you know, I'm going to go take care of some real life stuff that I've been wanting to do. And then like Sunday is like, all right, it's Sunday. I'm going to relax. Like I'm not going to feel guilty about it, which mm -hmm. has been good. But yeah, I feel like struggle. I feel like I don't see how you can like keep up 
grinding that hard and not like just collapse. I mean, yeah. eventually you will. That's the thing. Is yeah, you can really you will. That yeah, forever. you're 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 accumulating debt, right? And eventually you're gonna go bankrupt. Is kind of the analogy. Yeah, and I you think. see YouTubers and streamers do it all the time, where they go like, I think Jack Septicai just recently went on like a one month break and then came back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pokemon on Twitch. Just oh yeah. Went on a one month break. Yeah. Like that was that was literally like a couple days ago. Yeah. She's just like, I'm done. though. I've never and gone that, on a break like that, ever. I would love to. I would do it every like, January. I'd, yeah, we talked about that. We talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that. Like a bunch of me and my friends are talking about like buying a beach house or something. And every year from like halfway through January through halfway through February, all of us just go at, to this beach house and just. Because of the ad rev? Yeah, it's yeah. just, well, you just, yeah. you, you, you <laughs> just, thereof. you just go yeah. super hard in November and December, both because the ad yeah. revenue is so high and because you have so many sponsor videos, you're trying to pump out videos as much as you can. You're doing sponsor mm -hmm. videos. You just. And, and the holidays are all going on at the same time. You have family visiting yeah. or you're visiting family. Like, it's just so much. And then January rolls around. You're like, man, I just busted my ass for two months. Revenue now is shit. All the, mm -hmm. all the games are already out and people are already bored of them. You're, you're just like, mentally, you're just like, I don't want to do any of this stuff. And I feel like, mm -hmm. I feel like it's, it's time to get the beach house. <laughs> just like five, 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 or six of the, five or six of the boys just go to the beach In for a February month. February is when that December ad rev hits though. And you're like, man, maybe, maybe February is <laughs> so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I wonder is um, why not just uh, like keep a very low up. Like the thing about YouTube, right? That you can't do on Twitch is like, you can just schedule your videos to upload, do four videos. I'm doing then, that literally right now. Yeah, and then like schedule your videos and then and then like you could be on the beach and all those videos are releasing like one a week and it's like a lower cadence than like what you're doing. But like that that's like the, that's your downside. But you don't have to like not upload videos for two months, right? That's what I did while touring. I but mean, I that was it was a September through December ordeal. I'd be gone five days home for two, gone five days home for two. Mm -hmm. In that span of being on the road, I had stuff just scheduled. I'd be on stage and a video would go live. People would be like, how the fuck did you do that? Isn't that crazy? Magic. Yeah. 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 This is something That's... I've I've thought about because, like I said, I'm doing it right now. So this this weekend, I'm gonna be traveling to Massachusetts to go stay with my girlfriend's family for like a week because mm. they have like a pool and they and there's like lakes up there. We're just gonna go like just relax for a week and visit them because we haven't seen them in a long time. We got COVID tested and everything before leaving too. So, um, but I've been preparing like videos the past like three days. I've just been like recording as much stuff as possible. Now I have editors and it's not all. They're not gonna be done before I leave and scheduled. So I'm still going to mm -hmm. have to like, oh, review the video as they come in, upload them and whatnot. Um, but I've always been thinking like maybe it'd be better to just take that week off and, you know, post a video and be like, hey, I'm gone for a week. I'll be back rather than try and like pump out videos that might be lesser quality. I don't think any of the videos I'm going to be uploading are lesser quality, but maybe someone might think that because something was recorded a week ago. Right. Like a lot mm -hmm. of like the stuff I do, people care about it because it's relevant and new. And I don't like upload the next day or whatever, but within a couple of days, you know, if Modern Warfare releases a new gun or something or some new thing comes out and there's a whole group dynamic with my friends where I don't want to upload my video days after my friends have uploaded it. So it's old footage to people watching if they follow my friends that I have almost kind of thought like maybe it'd just be better to just I'll be gone for a week. And then when I come back, people are excited. The new video just kind of picks back up where it left off. But I don't know. I took a break mm -hmm. not so long ago. I didn't upload for nine days. Now my views have been slightly affected by that since then, but mentally, I, I mean, I didn't give a shit. It was just <laughs> nice to have that escape. I'm not even like looking at my numbers. I didn't. I uninstalled Studio from my phone. Wow. Like, I just didn't want to look at it for a week. I, I respect. I hey, needed that. I respect that. I actually. This is a funny thing. Like on Twitch, I actually don't look. It's gonna sound crazy from the guys like the analytics guy on Twitch. I don't look at my numbers on Twitch ever. I, I I could tell you right now, right now I cannot tell you how many subscribers I have, and I and I don't know how many how many viewers I had for the last seven days of streams. The only uh, numbers I look at are on fourteen and thirty day intervals, and I look at I, I look at the relative trends that I have concurrently. And the reason is because you can never get any kind of idea of how well you're doing off of a day of streaming. Maybe you had way more viewers than you did that day. Maybe you had way less. Maybe it's because everybody wanted to watch Shroud come back to Twitch, or maybe it's because everyone wanted to eat ice cream that day. You have no idea, right? Like, there's no way that you can do that. You can only analyze trends over long periods of time. So it's totally useless to get all neurotic about it and be like, I, I, like, I know so many people that are like, oh, like, uh, I'm, I, I lost 200 viewers. Uh, what do I do now? Um, like, it's over. Like, I, I'm, my content must be bad. They just, like, they, they, they go into this neurotic cycle and, like, they just blow themselves up. And it's such a, it's such a huge, like, 
waste of mental energy and time. Yeah. So I, I'm a I'm a big proponent of that. It's just like creating your content and just not even looking at it. I've luckily yeah. like been doing it long enough where I don't fall into that like mental trap. Like I know like mm -hmm. I could have two weeks where like my videos like oh man my videos aren't doing that well. It's like well you know people going back to school or whatever or it's finals week or it's like you know, holidays or it's just, you know, that game's kind of dying in popularity right now. Like another new game will come out or, you know, maybe it's time to switch something up. Like luckily I haven't fallen into that trap of like constantly worrying the second, like one or two videos does poorly. Cause yeah, I, it's definitely helped being around long enough, but now, yeah, that's mostly what I focus on is like, how was my month? And it's like, okay, well I had a month that kind of stagnated. It's like, all right, maybe it's time to switch some stuff up or it's like, oh, this month's doing well. Sure. I had a few bad videos or whatever, but yeah, I definitely look, try and look more long-term on things. Cause you can definitely, Especially YouTube adding that studio app where it's like, oh, your latest video is a 10 out of 10. People don't give a oh. shit about it. Like, <laughs> your, your newest video sucks ass and we want you to know. Yeah. yeah, that really is a stinger. Like, it's... They might as well just put a fucking garbage... You know how they do the fireworks for the 1 out of 10? <laughs> They might as well just put a fucking garbage can, like just, just jumping, just like like sludge gets right, dragged like, across yeah. all the numbers. Yeah, you just open the yeah. app and there's just like flames, like you're yeah, just sad a face. Fire. Like, you it's, you it's, were better off not even making this video. Yeah, Good waste of time. It's Susan, the CEO of YouTube. It's just a sad face of her. Like it's like, it's just like <laughs> I'm yeah. disappointed in you. It's like your dad. Like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I I just my last video it was that it was literally like like and it's like the way they say it is like a disappointed parent like. Less people are choosing to view this video. <laughs> yeah. Did you than know that? Usual. Like, you know, less people than usual are here. Your video is not performing as well as it. It's not like like they could have worded that like. Yeah, I know you're. Hard, I know like, you're trying hard. But yeah. yeah, I know you're the trying. What really hard. hurts is when it's like it's reaching the normal people. They're just showing less interest. Like, well, <laughs> yeah. fuck me. Yeah, it's, it's like and they might as well just be like, like, doesn't it feel bad that you put all this time into this video yeah. and it's just performing the worst out of all of your videos that no one likes you anymore and that you have nowhere to go but downhill from here? And you're like, oh, my God, it's like an yeah. existential crisis. Like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I'm luckily like it doesn't affect me as much now, but I, I definitely feel for like people that are just like super stressed by, it, you know, because if because obviously like I'm in a fortunate position where, you know, it, money is not a factor like I don't pay attention to my ad revenue I don't care what it is month to month yeah I know it's mm -hmm. plenty obviously to keep keep me alive but and that's pay a for mindset things that, too yeah that's a yeah that's but a healthy mindset for, for a other, lot of people it's that you can never have enough yeah but it's easier for yeah. some people you know it's easier for me than someone who is like oh you know I have rent to, like my YouTube channel success can determine whether or not like I'm going to be able to afford rent easily or like you mm -hmm. know pay off this debt or whatever like so I definitely know I have it fortunate from there, but that's always something the past few years is like, I don't care about like the revenue side of things. Like with the whole demonetized stuff happening, I didn't pay attention to it as much. All I cared about was how does your video perform when it gets demonetized? Cause I just care about channel growth over time. Like long term picture of if my channel is going downward, I don't give a shit whether my new video made more than it normally would or whatever. Like I, I want my channel to last another year. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, 100%. but I can see how some people, Man, YouTube, I mean, YouTube, YouTube could be a bitch for some you people. See numbers, you want to see, you know, it's especially with how detailed and, and how much of a deep dive like that creator studio will let you go through or just the analytics tab. But I mean, I'm guilty of it. But I think another thing that people don't take into consideration is like there's other factors that are leading to like to that reaction. Like I could be having a shit day. And if I go and look at my numbers, they could be great. and I'm still not going to be happy with it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm having a great fucking day. And I go and look at my video and it's nine out of 10. Fuck it. I'm uploading another one today. <laughs> Why does it matter? Like you have to approach those numbers with a mindset of I'm here to learn and to observe, not for this to shift who I am today. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's all it is. It's just like getting, imagine the analytics are your boss at a retail job. <laughs> they tell you, these are your tasks. This is what <laughs> you did. Well, this is what you did not do. Well, I'm not yelling at you. You just, you're shit at this and you're great at this. That's that's how I sort of taking an approach of it now. It's it's nothing personal. It's not like an attack. Like a ten out of ten isn't like, oh my god, you're terrible. It's like, what did I do mm -hmm. to get to to make that happen? What what did I not do to make it a six or a five or a one? Like Tyler and I had a talk recently about the importance of thumbnails. Uh, I I've I do face cam for everything. I've started putting my face in the thumbnail, so it's immediate recognition of who the channel is. But I wasn't yeah. I wasn't thinking about title of the game or showing more prominently in the title what the hell the game was as well because it's two-way street it's mm -hmm. not just a thumbnail and it's 
some yeah. of those things even i've been doing this for six seven years i don't it just whoop, went over right in my head yeah it's just something that, that i've yeah we do like illustrated thumbnails and my point to him was like i noticed he was uploading thumbnails and just based off looking at the thumbnail you couldn't tell what game it was and certain games like they have appeal just by being that game like minecraft like if you yep. have minecraft in the title someone just sees it they're like i like minecraft they're yep. automatically drawn to it and so yep. certain There's games it been, yeah so like all of my thumbnails while they are illustrated and I've always I've always told people like the thing with thumbnails is a picture says a thousand words. I hate thumbnails where it's just tons of text. Now you can have obviously two or three big, you know, text there that draws your attention, but titles are okay because it's it's a logo, it's something recognizable. You see it for the shape that it is, not even necessarily reading it. And so right. for certain games, you know, Minecraft, Modern Warfare, whatever's popular, like if the game is popular, you want the title in there. It doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt. But then there are definitely some games or we get, you know, maybe we get, a, <laughs> we, get a, we get a sponsored video in there or whatever. Or, yeah, yeah. Like, like Valorant. My Valorant videos would 100% done better if I just never put anything about Valorant in the title or the thumbnail. <laughs> for sure. But Yeah, I think that's like, like, well, that's like the meta that I'm paying the most attention to right now is like the Ludwig, like moist critical type meta, which is like, you know, uh, like, like two moist critical videos. It's like Batman doesn't kill people. Second video. Batman definitely kills people, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, why is that happening? And like, what is going on there? Like, what, what's, what's the, what's like YouTube's thinking and like promoting these videos? Really I, interesting. I did a couple mm -hmm. things recently that uh, I, I mentioned on like Twitter and stuff that I thought was funny. It was there, there's been a couple instances where I didn't have a thumbnail, like my artists yeah. weren't available, and I'm like, oh shit, because I work with one typically and when she's not available, I go down to a couple other ones that I use sometimes, but they also work for other people, whatever. And there's just some days where I went through three people. None of them were available. I've got a video yeah. to upload in an hour. All right, Microsoft Paint. Here we go. <laughs> and so no joke, I would whip up my own thumbnail in paint And both times. I've done it now. The videos have gotten over a million views and perform really well, but it's because I also kind of threw the joke in with the title. So like yeah. one of them was I drew like this guy in Modern Warfare, like I, I, I wrote Modern Warfare like in shitty text, drew mm -hmm. a guy, drew a wall and then drew me getting shot by that guy through a wall and me with like a frowny face. And the title was <laughs> uh, the title was Modern Warfare. But this guy is cheating as clearly shown in this thumbnail. And people <laughs> wanted to click on it just to say they love the thumbnail or they liked the joke or they thought it was funny. And so like, there, you know, there's. You can get was real this on a white background. Yeah. Too? Like the yeah. white, the white paint. Background? Yeah. Okay, literally that's amazing. like right. you could tell I made it in 10 minutes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was just part of But if you make it part of the joke, like you kind of have to, you know, you have to play around with things. You got to get creative. And, and I always thought it was funny. So I had, I tweeted about that and people were that's like, really people were like, that's beautiful. But yeah, that kind of goes along with like the critical thing of Batman doesn't kill people. Then the next video, Batman definitely does kill people. Like, yeah, you know, if you're following along, you're getting the joke and that just adds to the content adds to the value yeah 100 yeah. percent. i totally agree yeah. absolutely charlie is quite an anomaly though i feel like he literally just chooses like the default thumbnail that youtube recommends and it just is like no he literally said this that is, is that he what he literally is that what he does? yes i i when i did my deep dive with him <laughs> i because I, I asked him every analytical question in the book and like and like it was it's so crazy to be like a person that's like i understand like every youtube analytic and i'm like okay but do you look at watch time and and, he'll, and his answer will be like yeah man you know i just kind of like feel it out and like that's what's so fat like, i love that like, yeah you you went with like a super analytical approach he's like no i just thought yeah. the default thumbnail was funny looking so yeah yeah and like that's that's actually a hundred percent what he does um for all of his videos he chooses the youtube recommended thumbnail out of like the three that he likes the most <laughs> Yeah, but I've done that before when I don't have a thumbnail because yeah. YouTube YouTube is drawn to faces. I have learned because mm -hmm. as soon as I went to face cam, literally every default thumbnail option is usually a horrible contorted image of my face. And yeah. sometimes they're just so damn good. I'm like this is better than the thumbnail I paid for. Fuck. Like, I'm just going to use it. Like, yeah, it's but the fact that he does it for every video. Every like you video. can tell, like, look at the Karen videos. It, it's like a 240p screenshot. <laughs> Doesn't care. Doesn't yeah. even fill like the frame. Like, yeah, it's I, it, I click it instantly. It is insane. It is. It is crazy. Yeah, it's like it's just and that's the that's the gem of YouTube, right? It's like it, you can I, it's like coming from the Twitch world. It's so much harder to do these things. It's so much more difficult to like be able to look at someone like Charlie and then because a lot of success in life, I think, comes from just being able to look at what other successful people are doing 
and think about it and then innovate it on it in your own way. And like everyone has these inspirations on Twitch is so hard. It's like, if you want to start a stream and you want to be like XQC or something, and you just want to like, yeah, yell like into dude, a dude, 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 you gotta like have that. Like, yeah. I've yeah. Seen, you like, have that cadence but, and you just yell like him. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's not going to work. Translate. No, like, it's it not going to work. The same. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube definitely is like, you can kind of emulate what people are doing and, and twist it in your own way. Which you is have cool. to find what your strengths are, though. Like, my whole thing is that, and everybody knows this, unless there's someone who's coming to the channel from a recommended video or for Twitter or something, I am fucking terrible at video games. But my channel is based on video games. I'm sort of just like the gesture, <laughs> like the jester in the castle. Like, yeah. I play with my group of friends. They all like, oh, ha, ha, look, Anthony's doing bad again. And I yell <laughs> and I make jokes, but it's like, that's my niche. Like that's that's my strong suit. Mm -hmm. I ran with it. Like I'm sort of like a funny version of Woody's gamer tag. Like I <laughs> yeah. know I'm not good at games, but I still was like, that's fine. Let's embrace it. Let me find my strength. His was through information like COD tutorials, mm -hmm. Minecraft servers, just being all around smart with that kind of shit. I just like I just like making jokes. People I mean, relate I'll, with being an everyman because I'm not great at everything. That exact I do. as I was about to say is like a lot of your content is just taking advantage of the fact that you're shit at it. Yeah, <laughs> right. It in really a, is in a, in a really good way and showing that, and that's like so important. Is like I always remember the uh, the poll statistic when like when George W. Bush ran for president. The number one reason why people voted for him was I feel like I could have a beer with that guy. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't policy, right? Yeah. And, and and it's like when you do videos like that you're doing like your videos like this happy wheels level is still impossible for me right like like it's like okay like i get it and and it's like that there's like there's like an association there's a familiarity there that's like really wholesome yeah, yeah. no it's, yeah. i don't mm -hmm. try to be anything that i'm not and i think people need to understand especially if they're going to be doing content creation is that if you're being someone that you're not people will see through that shit really instantly quickly. We really have like a reptilian quick. brain that's evolved over like a million zillion years to predict <laughs> lies. Like if somebody looks at you and is like, yeah, I did that. We're like, what? no. And like, there's like, a, there's like a little <laughs> dude in the back of the head that like evolutionarily like, he's just, he's just like, that didn't happen. And like, we have like a detection system for that. Like if someone's being super fake and not authentic to themselves, the humans can like parse that out Im immediately. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it could it just be anything. It could be a face. It could be the tone of voice. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I get a lot of people. We all have examples, I'm sure, but I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus. Yeah, the, like I, I, we could all think of them. Like, um, oh, yeah, there's tons of them. I, I always get asked all the time <laughs> if people should play characters, right? Like, if people should play characters on Twitch or if people should, and, and like the it thing needs that to be I always know answer, that it's a character. Um, it, I feel yeah, like, but I, I, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But I also think that there's actually more value in. Um, bringing out who you most authentically are as a greater person. And what I mean by that is you actually mentioned it before. One of the number one things I think that people can do as YouTubers and Twitch and Twitch streamers uh, that's, that's underrated is improv classes. And I mean like in-person improv classes because in the same way that actors got a lot of their start through theater and improv, improv teaches a lot of the core fundamentals of communicating and bouncing off of people and continuing conversations and and cracking jokes like holy shit like for what for what um you guys do where you have a lot of collaborative content it's so important yeah i mean that's so like, that was yeah. like the basis of our content from like really since the beginning but especially like once gta became a thing like yeah. we really kind of embodied these characters in the game and while the characters were us we would role play in a sense as these characters actually having the things happen to them in the game. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much what all of our videos were. They were just improv. We would just set up all these scenarios. We would set up skits. We would set up missions. We would do all this stuff and all of it was just improv. And I think that's definitely like strengthened all of our abilities to like be entertaining and bounce ideas off of one another. That's why I say I don't like doing solo content because I, I can't mm -hmm. just like, if I'm doing a solo video, I'm just sitting there the whole time. I'm like, oh man, it's been two minutes since I said something funny. Like I got to come up with something funny right now. <laughs> Whereas if I'm playing with friends, like I'm just there and whatever's happening is like, oh, I know what I can say right now. That's funny. Or yeah. I know what I can do right now. That's funny. Or it's just, or I'm just, I'm part of the skit or whatever's going on. And that's, right. uh, that's just what I'm better at than doing solo stuff. I feel like I put that's too much pressure strength. on myself. That's like what I yeah. said. My, it's like mine is the conversation you and I have been having is, and I, Devin, I was actually going to ask if you have any insight as to uh, an approach mm -hmm. to this, but 
as an established creator with we'll say nearing two million subs for gaming, if I want to push out of that into more of like a Leon Lush or a Charlie, what would be sort of a, a good path? Uh, if you know your strength is reactionary humor, being funny on your own naturally, because gaming for me is just a platform for my humor to mm-hmm. show people that, hey, this guy's funny. Doesn't mean I want to do gaming forever. And I don't. And I'm looking for ways to sort of grow beyond that. I, I think, think you're the live a... the, the just chatting on Twitch. I know you mentioned yeah. that's growing crazily. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a so I think there's two possible transitions for you. I think one is a a more live stream component, especially if you like kind of identify with that. And and for a person of your nature, I think that that kind of like live feedback is valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, you also might want to try YouTube streaming because I'm this is probably something we should cover. Um, but like I'm actually not convinced that Twitch streaming has a higher delta than YouTube anymore. Um, it, it seems to me that like so what what I mean by that is like. It used to be that if like you want to be the most successful live streamer, you stream on Twitch like hundred percent. That's it. But okay. I don't think that's the case anymore. Like um, Courage JD, right? You're getting like two hundred fifty thousand people on on Fortnite. We, we mentioned Laser Beam. There, um, we mentioned um, obviously the um, the doctor coming to YouTube is a big thing. Um, though we haven't like really seen that parse out in terms of the data because like it's going to take a little bit more time to see where that ends up. And if you look at like Shroud coming back to Twitch, which was the biggest thing to happen on Twitch. Right. I think he capped at like 450. So like we're seeing concurrent viewership that's higher on YouTube for uh for people that like really don't have as strong of a brand as some of these people on Twitch. So I don't even know if Twitch is the place that you should end up, but I think that's option number one. I think that option number two is uh just taking another path and starting another YouTube channel and like continuing okay. what you do here. And I know you've I, I guarantee you've thought about this and continue to do your gaming content but directing and CTA and users to your new YouTube channel and seeing how it does. And as a creator kind of like branching out in that way can be like really healthy. And you're at the point where you can start considering doing that because of your, because of your subscriber count. Gotcha. No, I've definitely considered mm-hmm. that. I know this something like mm-hmm. Tyler is, you are, you are sort of like anti second channel, aren't you? Or have yeah, I just, past? I just see so many people that are just like, Oh, I'm doing something different now. Let's do a second channel. And then it just, it goes nowhere or it just dies or they just give up effort on it because it's like, you know, your main channel has been your focus for so long Mm -hmm. and this is where, you know, you make the most money. This is where the most people are that are going to see you. That's why like with this podcast, I didn't want to make a second channel. Like I wanted it to kind of be branded its own thing, but it's not, I I just don't see it ever being as popular on a different platform as it will be on this platform. Maybe, maybe that's wrong in my thinking, but I don't think the first episodes would have gotten over a million views had it been on a different, you know, had I had to been like, hey, go over to this channel to watch it. Like, I just don't think it would take off as well. Um, it, it wouldn't have, but you're making a podcast like once a week, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, so I, like I, I if, have thought about doing a highlights channel where that would be a whole separate channel and taking so like segments from here. So if you're pivoting and you're going to do like two or three videos a week and they're going to be on a completely different subject, that's where I think a new channel is productive. Um, I, 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 I think... You, particularly with you, um, I, I, I I think Anthony, the you have very consistent branding across your videos. Um, the coloration is pretty like background is very 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 much the same. You're always using your face, so I, I would be curious. Like another way to try this is like try doing some of this content on your um, on your parent channel. Because it seems to me that it's like it's a pretty short step over to like reacting to gaming stuff, right. and then maybe from there it's and he's done. Short so you've step. done some of that, right, Anthony? You've reacted yeah. to like uh, mm-hmm. bugs on yeah, Reddit like or whatever. My Reddit, yeah, my subreddit entirely is just horrible body glitches in gaming, and people yeah. fucking eat it up. So I, I think there's some the transition from just reacting there. to gaming to more of just world, mm-hmm. is it like a, like a stepping stone. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, I think like. Um, here, um, I need to use the bathroom like so bad. Can I? Oh, yeah, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you're fine. You're good. This, this all gets... I do, all I do is drink green tea and water, and yeah, then you're like, good. um, I'm actually yeah, okay. good for a water refill. If you guys want to take like a quick five, yeah, yeah, can sure. we take like just a couple minutes? Yeah, right and, and and if you gotta yeah. go anytime soon, we can wrap this up no, here dude, pretty good. quick. So I just, but the conversation's just been going, so I've just been kind of letting it go. Yeah, but, yeah. So yeah. after this, we'll, I'll, 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 I'm gonna think more about your thing. All right, feel free. Okay, all right, I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Yeah, I've never I've never played an MMO. Never gotten into how, one. How can that be? Um, so I st- I mean I started playing games when I was a little kid. 
always played single player games, PS2 up to Xbox 360. I never got internet in my house, like good internet past dial up until 2010. Yeah. I had dial up until 2010. What? And so my first online gaming experience was what? Yeah, it was Black <laughs> Ops 1 in 2010. You're muted, Anthony. Um, but that was my first, yeah, that was my first online game. And then a year later is when I started my YouTube channel. And so I always played Modern Warfare. I played Modern Warfare 3, then Black Ops 2, and then, you know, single player games here and there. Just there was never time once I started playing online to win my YouTube channel to like get into an MMO. So I've never, never played a single one. I've always wanted to, but now I just feel like I'm so busy. I just can't do it. I can't get you into one. Can't do it. They're so overwhelming. Bro, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's meant to be that it's literally like meant to be like a second life, right? So <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. So it's it, it can be really, really encompassing, well, um, my, especially if you get into some of these older ones. I just can't, and I, I I just can't really get into playing a game like a super long time solo. Like I've just I've just grown to love playing with friends so much. So it's like okay, not only do I have to find an MMO, I have to find yeah. an MMO that I have like three or four friends that will also play. And then oh, right. we have to play the same yeah. amount because if they get way ahead of me, I'm going to be discouraged and not want to play. It's like, I don't yeah. know. And you've always got that one friend that's going to just like oh, yeah. hoop socket and go yeah. super hardcore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. So we were talking about um, Anthony, right? We're talking about your growth. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys ready yeah. to hop on Kim, we can do that. Got a growth. Yeah, what do you, love, you got a growth uh, on your body, Anthony? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> just in my pants right now. Okay. Hey. Woo. Okay. Okay. Dude, okay. Yeah, it's I testicle. had. I have no idea um, how far this podcast derails, but I actually had. Um, oh, we, like we get pretty weird, in the weeds. So you you had something what? weird going on. I had a weird bump, and um, during COVID, and it was like on my thigh, and like of course, being a person that is just like a, on an internet person. I was like, oh, I immediately, immediately have worried. ass cancer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like I just, I, I just like, that's what it is. It's, ass, it's like Twitch chat has finally given me ass cancer. I always do this would happen. <laughs> I, I, I always do it. And like, so I, I, like, I knew it. I was just sure in my head I had ass cancer. I went to the doctor and it was like this whole ordeal because this was like lockdown, right? And they were like, what do you want? Are you dying? And I'm like, yes, I have a bump on my thigh. And they're like, they're like, <laughs> like, and then I'm like, wait. <laughs> and I actually managed um, to get. So I live in Seattle, and I managed to get uh, an appointment at uh, like one of the big hospitals. And I like went through this like suction tube. They like tested my temperature. They they like uh, they like PPE gear. It's like some fucking outbreak shit. And uh, I like finally get there. And I go up to like the seventh floor, like of the surgery unit, and there's no one there except for this like <laughs> one guy. And he's like, What do you want? And I'm like, I'm here for the bump. And he's like, You're a patient? And I'm like, Yeah. And he's 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 like, We we haven't seen any patients in a very long time. <laughs> Cause this is like a month. They, they haven't <laughs> seen anyone. So I'm like, Well, what do I do? And he's like, I'm I don't know. Hang on a second. It turns out the head surgeon of Harborview Medical, like a dude that like if you get like a gunshot wound, like like you're just like you get gunshot. It, like this is the guy that like get. So he's, he's super overqualified. He's the guy that looks at my bump. OK, and, <laughs> it, and I'm feeling so bad now because I, I, it's like there's like six doctors in the room. They have nothing to do. There's nobody there. If you're not a covid doctor, these are these are surgeon dudes. You have nothing to do because because nobody's at the hospital. Right. So no. I'm uh, so they run a um an ultrasound on it and I didn't know this but apparently you just can get bumps on your body. That's just a thing that can happen and they're called like um lipomas. lipomas. And they're just little bumps of harmless fat that they can remove and like they're like we can remove it if you want but it's like not going to do anything. And I and I had no idea about that, so it ended up being absolutely nothing. But man, dude, that whole experience uh, yeah. was like super surreal. Yeah, I mean, he I, said he he used to see almost fifty people a day, and now he sees zero. They just don't. They just didn't want to go because of the outbreak, or just it's he told me. He said I have patients that have stage four cancer, like people that are about to die. They've canceled their appointments with me because they don't want to get COVID. That's insane. And it can't get much worse. <laughs> that, you, would, you would think. You would think. Well, I guess yeah, they, they but, don't know what time I guess they have left to be spent with 
a shitty disease well, two on weeks top of their of already three. shitty disease. What do you fucking disease? do? I mean, come on. Well, it's like, like even like, I mean, people do for like cancer, um, for, for like cancer treatments that were not going in, that should have been going in. Like, um, but, but it's, and what's so crazy too is if you are going to get it, the least likely place you're going to get it is in like a freaking like PPE, like super insano hospital where like the COVID unit is like locked down by like military dudes. Yeah, and, it's like and something out of Cloverfield. Yeah, it, like straight up, like it, it, there's no way. Like um, in the early days, like I felt so good in that hospital. I was like, I was like touching everything, dude. Like they, <laughs> I was they, licking doorknobs. I was yeah, just running yeah. through, dude. I was, yeah, dude. I was because they have this little like robot, and he 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 goes on these wheels, and he comes into <laughs> the robot a room. is a he. I think so. It looks like <laughs> it. You know, you like know, give like your robots like personalities, and he yeah. comes up and he and he has this little tube that, that shoots up, and it like blasts this ultraviolet light. All around the room and kills everything. That's not where I thought you were going with that. I thought he was going to come in there and be like, "Bend over." <laughs> <laughs> He's like a this killer virus robot. He's a killer virus robot, and they send him through the whole hospital like four times a day. Can you buy one That's for awesome. your house? <laughs> I don't know anybody yeah. who comes in. Hold on, my robot's got to pat you down. Step in this room, <laughs> <laughs> like, like Joe Rogan tests all of his podcast guests, like like that. Yeah. I got like, tested this... the other day. That was a weird, weird experience. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to visit some family. Mm. Um, and I just, you know, I've been pretty well isolated, but I've gone out a few times and I was like, I want to, I want to get tested. And my girlfriend wanted me to get tested. So I did it. That is the weirdest sensation. Them cramming that shit way up your nose. Yeah. Not a fan. My nose felt weird all day. I don't like it, but if you're going to, if you're going to, no, I don't want to discourage someone from getting tested. Like, it's not that bad. It's just a weird sensation I've never felt before. I've never had something that far up my nose. You know, you know what hurts a lot? I've never had a booger that dying. far back. So you yeah. should get tested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Dying sucks. Dying's yeah. not very good. So I hear. Yeah. No, large, this is you definitely. Up your nose isn't so bad. No, not, not as bad as dying. I, I'd imagine it was all right, but that's yeah. great. Yeah. Devin, a question I wanted to ask you when we were yeah. talking a little bit more about just growing channels and stuff, and it totally slipped my mind, is uh, what is the importance of networking with similar sized channels that are also mm -hmm. trying to grow? So that's that's how we grew as a group, but that was also pushing 10 years ago. Yeah, that's, a, that's mm -hmm. another reason why we wanted to bring you on is because like we can give some advice on how to start a channel, but we started nine years ago, and like the yeah. landscape has changed so much. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the... Is this on YouTube or Twitch? Different answers. Or I guess either, because I, I mean, it sounds like on Twitch, this is probably very important because there's no discoverability, like you said. So, yeah. So, col so collaboration on YouTube and Twitch are. It's going to be obvious if I say it's very good, but um, there's a there's a way to do it that I think would would like provide. I, I want to like provide more value than like like. Well, what should we do to become good countries? Well, if you just be yourself, man. Like you, like, you know, <laughs> I want to like give like objective tactical advice. So, right. so the absolute best way to grow on YouTube right now is to, um, so, is to really understand, like, so, like if you know what kind of content you're going to create, you want to spend about, I'd say, 40% or even more, if you can get away with it, of your time on producing a good title and thumbnail. And really thinking through, based on like what you see from successful ch channels, your content actually doesn't matter as much as that to get into recommended, especially early. Yeah. So if you are doing like, and I think like a really, if you want to get into gaming right now, which I, I'm assuming just most people that are listening to this are yeah probably, probably. doing, yeah. Um, the number one way to do that is guided info content, especially on new games like um, Escape from Tarkov or um, like uh, like anything that is coming out. If you can do uh, targeted guide content on that that's going to be really successful the and then thinking about the titles and thumbnails in that way as for collaboration on i'll start with twitch like for for twitch collaboration if possible you want to be working with channels that are slightly larger than you the big mistake that people make is like they go for um like hey what's up like asmund gold can i like play wow with you and then <laughs> it's like he never got back to me i guess i'll just right. never do a collab again right there's a there's a really good book called The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, and the idea of it is that um, I'll, I'll, I'll 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 tell it with a story. So, do you guys know who Moon Moon is? I've heard the name. Yeah, it's not familiar. familiar. He's a really big Twitch streamer, and he's like an improv comedy streamer that plays games and like jokes about him. 
and this is a guy that I've like really valued for a long time. I've really respected the way that he does content. And I'm just like, I'm just super jazzed on him in general. So, um, I have like a little bit of an imposter syndrome around asking people like that to do my deep dives, even though I've had a lot of like really big creators on my shows. And like, I, 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 I'd like really ask them a lot of like really deep questions. We've had like Olympic medalists and like all kinds of crazy stuff. I still have that, that nervousness. One day I just asked moon moon to do the show. And he's like, yeah, of course. And then I, I wondered, I was like, moon, why don't you ever do shows with anybody? Like, and he's like, well, to be honest, you're the first person that asked me. So in all the, all the time that, he had been streaming no one had ever asked him to just like go on a show because they all assume what i did which is like oh like you, you he would never want to do that so reaching out and asking people is the way that i look at it is like akin to like old school sales which is like you send 10 emails and then if you don't get a response you send 10 more and then you send 10 more and you send 10 more and eventually you're going to get some hits by just by the numbers game but people that that want to collab on YouTube and Twitch when they're starting out, they don't do this. What they actually do is they just they send one email at, or five emails, and they're like, "Oh, they hate me. Everyone hates me. I'm not going to do anything." And then they go <laughs> back to doing the easy thing, which is like start OBS, start streaming, right? Right. So it's a numbers game of actually asking people, and you want to ask people that are that you can provide value to. So it's like it's it's really cool that I'm on this podcast, and like it's kind of amazing to me that like you guys want to come see me when like you guys are the million subscriber youtube channel right <laughs> um i i do spend all my time thinking about this particular thing which is like how to do this on youtube and twitch so i think that's where the value is but at the same time it's like i i would not be opposed to like um going on a channel with um i don't know like 100k subscribers or 10k subscribers right um this is a long answer sorry there's a lot of corollaries here but gary v has a um he's like a really prominent entrepreneur and like growth mindset dude for, for digital media he has a concept called um, one is greater than zero. And the way that that concept works is like, let's say that you go on a podcast with 40 people on it, right? 40 people view it. And I, I actually did a podcast last week that uh, was the first podcast ever. I think it's going to get probably almost zero exposure. But the podcast was with the head of trust and safety for Discord and um, a bunch of trust and safety people from Twitch. So uh, probably goes out to nobody. But maybe the audience of 20 people that listen to it are prominent Twitch staff members and something comes from that. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So like right. you never want to dev like maybe someone says, oh, I'm not going to do a collab with this guy because he only gets 50 viewers. Well, that's 50 more people that have heard of you now that didn't before. And so, you know, and so you know, you know you, nothing about these people. You don't know what you know they nothing, do. They yeah, can all be they marketing could, directors. They yeah. can all be VPs. They can all be CEOs. Yeah, you have no idea. So it's always valuable to collab um, up and down i would be happy to go on smaller channels because i i can i can that's a small percentage of an audience that hasn't heard about me before and i and i, I think that's really valuable um so i think the two things that hold people back from collab are one just literally the art of asking and 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 that that, that is a continuous thing like you need to be like okay i am going to send two emails a day seven days a week i'm just going to make sure that's a part of my day here i'm going to schedule it and they're going to be unique emails that are not template that's just like hey saw your channel. I love it. I do this kind of content too. Let's do a collab together. Here's how I think it would look. Here's some value I think I could provide. Um, what, like what's, what's good for you next week. And like, that's a great template kind of email where you really structure it. You take the time to write like a custom thing and you do it. And again, this is like traditional sales. Just saying, you saying this now, I, I can, my business email is already going to be blessed. I can already tell. So. Yeah. Um, there's a couple core elements of that. So like, for example, let's say that I'm reaching out to like a new brand. Like, I'll just randomly say, like, let's say I want to contact a Twitter, like, um, because I'm an agency and I want to help like get people get Twitter verified, right? Um, I, I'd send some email like this, right? And I'd say, like, hey, this is Devin Nash. Um, I am a, um, I, I run it. I would say something that's like a qualifying thing. So, like, your email to me. Yeah, um, I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, Anthony didn't see it, but but my email, yeah. It was incredibly good because you said in the title parentheses 7.5 million subscriber YouTube channel. Yeah, I felt kind of douchey doing it, but I'm like, he's definitely going to notice. Yeah, and, I, and of course I did. And <laughs> like, uh, now, it could have been it could have been a smaller YouTube channel and I would have taken it, but a lot of people may not. And then like I will spend a very short amount of time qualifying myself, like maybe no more than two sentences. Um, just the intro, because if it's any longer than that, then people will um, turn off because they want to know how, what value you're going to provide to them. Uh, someone like me, 
I get over 500 emails a week. That's not an exaggeration. I'm not bullshitting. That's how many I get. Yeah, I and get that's, over 500 And, and that's week. part of the reason why I was like, I want to let, like, yeah. I'm going to put how many subscribers. Like, this is, you know, this is a fairly large podcast. Like, I just wanted you to know. Like, I feel like exactly. you take notice, so. The, the number one thing that I get in those emails of the ones that I get is stuff that people want from me. It is, um, hey, could I get some advice on how to stream? Um, some people just ask me for money. I actually love those emails. They're just like, <laughs> like literally people that are like, hey, bitch, give me money. I am the next ninja. And if you don't invest in me, you're going to be sorry. I'll be back. And like I get those all the time. Like just people that just ask me for like fucking $5,000. Like just like, you know, just they shoot their shot, dude. Like there it is. I've had people you know? ask me to pay their tuition. Yeah. Like it's like, like, <laughs> like all the time. I don't even know who so you are. <laughs> so like when you're a when you're an expert in an industry or, or or even if you're speaking to someone who is a large content creator, that person may have like a deluge of emails. Like in my case, it's like thousands strong. Right. That like um, and, and like if there is somebody that wants something from me for nothing, I will immediately archive that email. That's it. Right. I, I, I will not respond to that because I, I just don't have the bandwidth to do it. So the next thing you want to do is you want to give a value proposition which is, um, here is how I think this can add value to you. So it's like, um, I saw that you do uh, Minecraft guide content, and I have like a special version of Minecraft that I've been doing for years. I think we could work on a guide together, and it would do like twice as well. So we could like, we could do better titles, we could like work together. Like, And then the third thing you want to do is you want to have like a, a clear follow-up action. Like, does next week around like Wednesday or Thursday work for you? let me know if you want to do that or change your time. So you have like a very, and, and like just that kind of email where you kind of custom template that out will be really valuable and will get you a lot of responses. You can kind of like, you can kind of like work with it. I yeah. feel like it's important to touch. Cause I used to, uh, this is my experience with management and retail and stuff too, is it with everything you just said, how many sentences do you think we're talking total? Some people yeah. get really wordy and it's like, I need to know like who you are, what it is you're offering win and it's like that's it because i don't like you think that i would go i would say one to two sentences max on qualifying yourself so it's like hey i'm devin um i was in the i was in the esports industry at a sea level and i run a talent agency might be it um something like that um i run a talent agency actually i would even say that differently i'd say i run a talent agency of top youtube and twitch influencers that because you could run a talent agency and it could be you know, I, I'm like, my, my, this is my cat. He's my talent, you know, like, <laughs> like, like that kind of thing. So you want to like call yourself, qualify yourself like really strongly there. Um, and then that's two sentences. Then I would say the value statement can be one to three sentences. Um, and then the, uh, all, the scheduling is another sentence. And I wouldn't go above six sentences in an email ever. Yeah. So that, um, I just wanted to hit on that because I, that's really I important even, point. At one point when I was running a store, I would have regional managers email me back and be like, why is this email so long? Like they wouldn't, oh, even yeah. re they wouldn't even reply to the points that I had asked them on. Sure. Cause they I'll do that all it. the time. Yeah. There's, they there, there's, they there's, don't there's, care. It's like, what do you fucking want? Just yeah. Keep, there's a like, middle ground. Pointed. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a middle ground between being like overly professional and trying to sound, you know, legit and everything and just getting to the point. Like there's definitely too professional will make you seem like you have no idea what the fuck you're doing sometimes. A hundred percent. I, I, I think that, um, way too many people try to sound like a badass and that they know what they're talking about when all people really want the whole meaning of communication is to tell another person what you mean. It's for them to receive what you mean. And the shortest amount, like there's an old quote by Mark Tra Twain that I always remember, which is like, I apologize for writing you a long letter because I didn't have time to write you a short one. I love that. Uh, that's, quote. that's deep. I'm trying to think of it. Now. Yeah. I'm trying to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that quote because it's a it, it says that th when you take the time to write something, to say, it's like our YouTube titles, right? It's like we can shorten down a title that's like top five best Minecraft tips you won't believe gone sexual insane point. And then like you you lower that like you, what you do is like you put that in a notepad and you distill it down to it's like 40 characters that it's like the most valuable thing. And right. now people get way more. And it's exactly the same when you're asking things of people or when you're communicating with people. You want to make that as succinct as possible. But asking everything in this game, everything in this game of Twitch and YouTube growth is consistency. It, it, is, it is showing up. Like if all I, I've told people a lot of times, I believe that if all you do, if, if you do nothing else besides checking all your emails 
writing the few emails that you need to do every day to ask people for like collabs or things that you need, and then doing that every single day and responding promptly, like you'll double your income no matter what job you're in. I really believe that because so few people do it and because due diligence is so rare. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I have, mm -hmm. even at this point, even though I have, I have an agent who goes through all my emails, takes care of all my brand deals. I still get notified of every single email and I'm on it within five minutes because it's mm -hmm. like, I want to know because it's important. It's like, this isn't, that, that's one thing that I think a lot of people need to understand is like, if you're, if you're looking at networking and growing your channel because you want it to be a business, you have to treat it like a business. Like a business. Sometimes yeah. it will not be fun. Sometimes it shouldn't be. Yeah. No, it, it's, if you enjoy it too much, maybe there's something you could be better at. The, the thing about success is my favorite quote about success ever is success is actually really simple, but it's not easy. So yeah. like success on success isn't hard. Like you, you show up, you, you look at what successful people are doing, um, whether if it's on Twitch, like, okay, like look at like what successful people are doing. They have tertiary channels. They all have YouTubes. They all have other stuff they're doing. They're driving in users. They're creating an entertaining content. They're constantly thinking about like, what is like the one question that I always ask myself is like, what is the most important thing that I want to create today and the message that I want to bring to people. And I will go back and I will look through my live VOD content and I will, and I, so I have a little like stream deck section right here. And what I do is I have a button here that creates a highlight on my VOD for me. And I'll click this highlight button. And then uh, what, if I feel like I had a bad interaction with a viewer or I feel like I like told a joke that didn't land or did land, right? I will then go back and I will look at that point in that VOD and I'll take notes on it. So these are all like tactical things that you can do to improve as a broadcaster, but none of that is going to equal up to just showing up and to, and to, and to showing up consistently per, and, and, and doing your thing and then improving a little bit upon it. Um, like that is the real deciding factor. We, we ran a big study um, in our agency a couple of years ago about this and we we looked at all of the most successful ways that people grow on twitch uh, so we looked at collabs we looked at um uh everything and and the number one way to grow on twitch was consistency for sure people that did it consistently succeeded at a higher rate than anyone else now that said you have to be conscious that in this ecosystem uh, there's there's such a thing as planting seeds in the winter right? And they, they won't grow because the ecosystem isn't there for you to grow. So you have to be consistent in a way. Uh, 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 you, can, you can literally stream for seven hours for 10 years and you'll never get discovered in this ecosystem. So, so that consistency has to translate over to consistent Instagram posts, consistent YouTube posts, right? You have to do more to build that. But that would be my answer for sure on consistency. It's a combination of asking and it's a combination of staying consistent and asking until you get results. It's yeah. sales. You take a sales class and you'll, you'll learn it. Yeah, you're just selling yourself. Mm -hmm. I did a tweet where I asked people to like ask some questions before this podcast of like what stuff they, oh. want, they wanted to know about like, you know, becoming a YouTuber, becoming a streamer. And mm -hmm. three of the most popular ones were, I haven't pulled up here, but one was how do I bring in viewers, views? How do I promote myself? We kind of talked about that. What equipment? Yeah. That one's a little different. Like that one, I feel like people can do some research and figure that one about. The other one was how often to upload or like what a schedule should be. Or like quality over quantity when it came mm -hmm. to like YouTube. And I feel like that kind of touches on it. Like when it comes to streaming, you have to you have to be consistent with it. And when it comes to YouTube, you have to be consistent, but not for the sake of consistency, I feel like. I feel like people shouldn't strive to upload a video every single day just to upload a video. Like only upload a video every day if you actually have something worth uploading every yep. day. Like you YouTube, know YouTube YouTube's a little meta. different. YouTube meta in like 2016 ish used to be upload a video every day to be successful. And, and the algorithm used to value that really highly. And so a bunch of people were, were doing that nowadays though, um, because YouTube is able to so effectively create a profile on its users, your main source of discovery on YouTube is going to be through the recommended and browse tab. And so that, that is not really important how often you upload. The, the optimal time to upload on YouTube right now is three times a week. If you want to be like just dead to the weather, the most successful possible, three times a week, three, three every seven days is good, but you can absolutely do less than that and succeed no problem. Once oh, yeah. a week I is mean, fine. You have yeah. like Mr. Mm -hmm. Beast doing like one video every couple weeks or whatever. And or Mark obviously, Rober. yeah, yeah. yeah like, other channels mm -hmm. doing, doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're starting out, you know, 
more is probably better than less just because it's more of a chance that that video yeah. will get recommended. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh man, I, I, I'm starting out, I'm going to upload daily. It's like, well, what are you uploading every day? Like if you're just pumping out the same video over and over, like you playing whatever game or like there's got to be a purpose That's behind another it. another thing that I think is really important is like so many people take that, like I've had a lot of people that take that advice of like, oh, I need to start a YouTube channel to grow my Twitch. And then they just upload stream highlights and they upload yeah, like, um, yeah. they, they'll upload, upload like a three hour VOD. And even like really big Twitch streamers make this mistake. Like they upload yeah. like a three hour VOD. It's like, if people don't want to watch you on Twitch, they're not going to want to watch you on YouTube, <laughs> right. right? Like the, 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 the whole lesson here is you need to actually sit down and think about the kind of content you create. So I'll, 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 I'll tell this like, so when I came back to Seattle in 2019 and I wanted to start this Twitch stream, I knew exactly, and I mean, I wrote down like exactly what I was going to do. I said, I am going to become the number one industry thought leader for Twitch, YouTube, and digital media marketing meta. That's it. Like, I'm, there's not going to be a better business stream than me. The end. That's it. I'm the best, right? And I'm going to qualify that by doing a combination of collaborations and talking to people about it, um, by spending a shit ton of, one, load of time making sure I know my numbers and I know my research, and by talking about these subjects. Which and, and I also knew that to be a gap because I think after um, Total Biscuit left us, you know, um, we've never in gaming had that kind of meta commentary um, on the industry ever again. They're just, they're just, they're, there's other channels that have tried. They didn't get there um, like he did. I wanted to recreate that, and 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 and, and I had a. I, I just, I, I'm I'm telling this story because for every content creator that might be listening to this, there is such enormous value in actually going through the process of asking yourself the question and actually writing down what do I want this to be, what like like what am I going to be producing that is interesting and unique to other people, and is going to appeal to them, and if possible, what is the market for that information? By going into Google AdWords, which is a free program, you can you can just type Google t keyword tool and you can log into any Google account and you can search the keywords of the type of stuff that you might be interested in. So you can search for things like Minecraft gameplay and see how many, often people search it. You can also go to Google Trends for this, right? So if you then believe that you understand your content and you understand what the market is for it and it's pretty reasonable, you're ready to go. And then from there, it's consistency and innovating on, on your ideas. Yeah. So what, what, with you mentioning like some of the streamers like just uploading VOD content, I've always like, yeah, I've always like hated that over the years. I'm like, I'm like, my it was worse back in the day. Like there was a lot of people that would just stream every day, and then they would that was just their entire video. And I get it. If your focus is on your if, if the focus is on your Twitch channel, like maybe that's where most you you want your time to be invested. But there's definitely like a middle ground where you can work on that YouTube channel too. And we had Cipher PK on as a guest oh, a couple yeah. episodes he was back. On, uh... I co-host a podcast with a guy named Trainrex on Twitch. It's like the number one podcast on Twitch. And we had Cypher on. It was super awesome. Yeah, yeah. So talking yeah. to him, because he has had a ton of success on his YouTube channel lately with Fortnite stuff. He's killing and it. Yeah. And <laughs> to, the point where, it. to the point where now, yeah, his YouTube channel is like, we talked to him, like it, it's making more money and doing better than his Twitch channel even is. For sure. And mm -hmm. I accredited a lot of that success to the fact that like, he does make the videos while he's streaming. But he mm -hmm. actually like he's like, all right, chat, we're gonna make a YouTube video now and has yep. a plan I do the and then thing. records it mm -hmm. as if he's making a video, but just it happens to be live. And it's like that's the way that people should be doing. Like you can't just rip from your Twitch stream every single day and expect I mean, it can't work if you do some highlights and there's some editing with it, but I think having, you know, that bit of direction and like I think a guy's like Courage is doing it now too, where they do like specific challenges yep. in like Warzone and stuff, like it, it's good to do. Like you wanna have a purpose. Uh, so a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, okay, because this like 1 million subscriber YouTube person is doing this, this is the way to win. When it's like the rules for growing a channel change by how, like the rules for someone that has Ninja, for him to grow his channel at like 27 million subscribers is way different from somebody that said 100 yeah, subscribers. Yeah, that's because he's because, Ninja. And if you want to see Ninja yeah. on YouTube, you watch what Ninja upload. Yeah, like... Yeah, like he's, he's his point, own thing at this point, you know, Ninja is basically doing content and, and he's he's gearing himself up to appeal to non endemic people because he has already saturated the gaming market. And everyone knows who he is. So his only choice is to bring other people in from outside of other platforms. That's not the case that like someone is like for the most part, like if you are on YouTube, 
you have not saturated your market. There are way more people that could discover you, right? That, that, that are interested in the thing that you're doing. So if you're doing game guide content, there's way more people that are interested in game guide content that can discover you. you're not at your cap. So mm -hmm. you have to make content for them, right? Like, um, so like a guide, like, um, and, and take advantage of that. A guide like, um, okay, here's like the, the top 10, the like top 10 uh, Hearthstone Warlock decks this month, right? Is like very relevant. You're not going to reach your saturation for the number of people that want to see that with your 10 subscriber YouTube mm -hmm. channel, or even your 100K subscriber YouTube channel. But yeah. like that changes later. So making very, t and that's another really good thing is like, and this works on Twitch and YouTube is like making very, very targeted videos. Um, so like if you understand a, a certain niche like okay i am only going to discuss the best red and black Aquaria decks in magic the gathering and um and which ones are the most aggressive and have the highest win, win rates and then i'm going to title my video something like um best red black mtg deck i've ever seen best win rate like red like right right and like you appeal to a very small audience, but mm -hmm. you get those guys as subscribers and then you expand out as you grow that audience. Yeah. That's, that's something mm -hmm. I've talked with like some of my friends about is like, you know, we have, we have built up an audience and obviously we can make a video every day that only caters to that audience and do well. But in the long mm -hmm. run, that's not, you know, you don't want to do that. Like all always only catering to the audience you've already built <clears throat> is not going to set you up for, you know, long-term growth and growing your brand even more. Like you need to, you know, you yeah. need to try to reach people outside that and something I've tried to communicate with with some some of my friends and just some people that I've seen that might be not doing that, but the other uh, the other thing I think I have I, I would be like really at a disservice if I didn't talk about this too. Um, when you are creating your YouTube videos, I know just because well, one of the advantages of getting this many emails per week is that I also see a lot of the consistent trends of what hold people back because they they issue them as problem statements to me. One of the number one things that I'm sure you guys have seen a ton of is. Um, people feel like the quality of their video is not sufficient for YouTube. And I always say, just release your dog shit and be completely okay <laughs> with it being that every single successful creator I have, I started creating videos eight years ago on an original channel. You can still go look at it. It's called youtube.com slash mylixia. And my current YouTube channel, YouTube Devin Nash, right? Is like an iteration of that channel. But I have these just videos of like, a crooked camera. <laughs> I'm standing in front of it. I'm like this because I'm like terrified of like the camera. And I'm like, hey, this is Devin Nash. Um, I'm really uh, happy to be making a video for you today. I want it's terrible, right? And I keep them up because I want people to know that like every YouTuber has those skeletons in their closet. Yep, I've kept like I've, the, I've kept pretty much all my videos like too because they're they're shit, yeah. and I want people to know like that's you, that's where I started. That's where you start. And so like so many people, <laughs> they have this thing where they're like, oh, this YouTube video isn't good enough. Like it's not high enough quality. It's not going to be that. Just release your shit. You're going to learn so much more from the process of seeing that video perform and from seeing how the analytics play out and everything than you are if you don't release it and you go back to the drawing board and you keep doing your editing. You're never going to get anything done. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are afraid of failure, but like... Uh terrified don't don't have a correct definition of what failure is mm. to me failure is if you have this idea and you don't do anything to execute it or try but if you tried it and it gets 10 views and three dislikes and you look back at it a year later you're like wow that was terrible you still fucking did it i mean how is that not a win you can't mm. look at big picture only because if you do you'll never accomplish anything that you feel is important or yeah. has any gravity whatsoever in your life like if your only goal is i want to have a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube well what about the ninety nine thousand before that and the journey of like that growth yeah. like if you don't value that that when you have a million two million five like it won't fucking matter like it's just a number like real failure is in not taking action yeah, yeah. no this, yeah. it's not a failure mm -hmm. if you put up a dog shit video like you're talking about like oh put up your dog shit Devin, I have videos where I talked so little with my friends that I literally had to dub myself in <laughs> because I was like, this is shit. Like I speak three times. So yeah. I literally just like record lines that were never said <laughs> and put them in my video. I love that. Oh, and my I, God. And it, if you guys are like regretting like or, or feeling like, oh, that I would regret putting that up. It makes great content like eight years later when you go back and reflect on them on video. Mm -hmm. I've never been more embarrassed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Back then, I didn't have an audience. You know, it was like a thousand people. But then I went back and rewatched them on a video like six months ago. 
to show them to nearly two million people. Hundred oh percent. It's great. It's if you have to have some humility. Like I still put up some shit videos sometimes. It happens. Totally. Like yeah. something that I it, it maybe I say that because I think it was shitty, not because the general consensus is that it is. So maybe you think your content might be ass cheeks, but you've also sat there and stared at yourself for twelve hours while editing it. Like it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna feel natural to be like, God, I hate this at this point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just perspective. It it really is. Like we're also hard on ourselves in this day and age, more so than ever, because we can all be so self-deprecating on, on Insta, on social media, and and see that amongst other people. And you know, it's it's said in a joking manner, but deep down, it's like it starts to take a toll on you. And if you I, go ahead, I totally agree. Like I I think another thing is um one of the things that really changed me from being like a like to like one of the things that I knew when I was doing like pretty good content. Um, it used to be that I could never, ever watch my own content. I would hate doing it. I would be like, oh my God, I hate this. How could I ever listen to myself? And then I realized, I was like, holy shit. If I can't enjoy my own content, no one can. Like, like right. there's no, like, no one's going to like this. So I, I, I was like, I have to create, this is such a, like, I, I promise, like, if somebody thinks on this, this is like one of the most important things I, I think I could ever say. It's like, if you create content that you love to watch and you have a verified user base of one person, someone else is going to love it too. If you can't stand yourself, and I can't, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that are like this. The vast majority of people are like, I can never watch my own stuff. If you can't do that, you need to really think about what you're doing. You should love what you should love watching yourself. I, I listen to it. So people are going to be like, this guy is such a narcissist. But like, <laughs> I walk to work and I listen to podcasts of myself with other people. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, I, I do Man, that. This guy's fucking smart. I this like guy's him. Awesome. <laughs> that was a good point. That was really good. I really like this guy. You know, I should, I should, I should donate to this guy on Twitch. Like, you know, like, like, like I really, like, I do that. And I, I re-listen to stuff that I, because I know I'm creating stuff of value. Like I had this, um, this talk last week with a, with a VP at Amazon, the number four guy at Amazon, right? It, 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 and an Olympic medalist speed skater. And like, we just talked about like life and value. Like, I listened to that again, because I know that I'm, I'm, I'm adding that kind of value, right? Like, I, I know that that's like something that I want to see in the world, which goes back to that. That, that, that thing we were talking about before, it's like, you want to create something that you want to see in the world. It doesn't have to be that dramatic. It doesn't have to be like, oh, you're talking about Never to like, before seen, see never it. before done. Yeah, it's just- Yeah, like, yeah. It, it could just be like, you know what? I want more funny gaming videos in the world. There's not enough of those. Well, like, like, like the world sucks. Yeah, the, like, like, like the world sucks. People are sad. That. There's too many viruses and shit. Like I'm going to create more happiness. And then that's your thing. But it has to be something that you want to see in the world. Don't do it because like, it's like, oh, I got to be a famous YouTuber and I want the, I want the clout. I want to like, I want the FBI raiding my mansion too. You know, like, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go into it with the right reasons, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's, it, it kind of ties back to what we were saying earlier too, is about being fake is if you're just in it playing Fortnite because Fortnite gets views and you're just putting on this whole facade of like, I'm this Fortnite God and I'm having so much fun. Like, I could watch that for three minutes and be like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like, this yeah. guy hates what's mm -hmm. happening right but now. But if you watch me play Call of Duty and you're like, this guy's going one and seven, I don't know how he's enjoying himself. And you look at my face cam, <laughs> I'm like this the whole time. <laughs> yeah. There's bodies flying through the air. There's stupid <laughs> shit happening on the screen. My friends are saying stupid stuff. And it's like, they're good videos. Is it good gameplay? Fuck no. Yeah. But they're good videos. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um... The other thing too is another another thing since we're just kind of like we're like lightning rounding this like like I think at this point <laughs> yeah. like, but I love it like um another thing is like don't especially in the beginning don't get too married to the analytics especially especially on Twitch Twitch analytics are useless the the, the channel dashboard I have a video coming out about this it's like the, the channel dashboard is useless I think that's gonna be the name of the video the channel dashboard is useless <laughs> but, but, like be, like you'll look at it and it will be like what you have 30 percent crossover audience with uh people that also like watching um cats and you're like <laughs> okay um but like what percentage of my total viewership is that and twitch is like mm, i don't know and like, <laughs> well, it's useless and then tell me anything did it and like like there's nothing in there that's actually going to like add value to you like there's you, you like just like focus on creating the most entertaining and best broadcast you possibly can and keep doing that and innovate on that and and, and then do all the other stuff we've talk, been talking about like collab and like like inconsistency yeah. and things like that and on youtube um your analytics can help you a lot more 
but you can like start clicking through menus pretty quickly and start getting into like user engagement and like revenue and like the only real things you should really pay attention to on YouTube are watch time, CTR and engagement. Like like I, I think those are the only three things that I think you could look at. Like if your CTR is like really low or really high, you've got a problem because if it's really low, nobody cares. If it's really high, it's only your subscribers that are watching your video and that's a problem. So there's a lot of people that come to me and they're like, hey, I have like 25% CTR. I'm fucking killing it. And I'm like, nope, that's only your subscribers that are clicking those videos. Because yeah. if you get to recommend it, it's never going to be that high. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then like there's other people that are like, okay, my watch time is like 30 seconds. Okay, well, your content sucks. And you have to think about that. And, and so, the, but, but I would, outside of CTR and watch time, I wouldn't think about anything until you're at like 100K subscribers. And, okay. and by the time you're at 100K subscribers, you're going to know what to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Because you all have done enough videos. I think hopefully. I think people Just are gonna blow have up a... overnight because you get shouted out by the Ellen show or something stupid. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again, <laughs> anomalies. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think people are gonna take away a lot. It's been it's been good conversation. It's a lot of info so. in there for sure. There's just there's a lot of information for sure. I feel bad I... for whoever has to go through and archive this with the, <laughs> the timestamps. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. that's Eric. Eric's gonna have fun with that. Have fun, the, Eric. You know, the timestamp meta is really interesting because you can use timestamps to actually, um, this is like five brain. Um, Drive you them can, to a pre-roll? To a mid-roll? Uh, <laughs> you can use timestamps to inject keywords into your description. So for yeah. example, like I'll do a timestamp like the fastest way to grow on YouTube, which I, which I, which I know people will search for. And it will, it will show up in descriptions. Yeah. It'll show up in search. Oh, so that's sort of like a get around for that whole... Uh, what was it when people were putting? Tags yeah, I, I, got my, I got my, I got my, I got, I got my channel <laughs> terminated for that back in the day. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't, I, oh, I don't remember if I had my channel. I've had my channel terminated twice. I think once was a, mm -hmm. once was an error while I was in Miami, and I was I like that. freaked out. I was like, "What the fuck just happened to my channel?" It was just a glitch, apparently, which yeah. is cool. You know, it's nice to be on a platform where a glitch just deletes you know everything you've ever worked for your, for the last your entire nine life. Years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. but and then the other time was because I did that. I had tied, I had tags, like I would just put a list of tags in the bottom of my description because everybody did it. And then they changed yeah. their policy where they're like, yeah, you're not allowed to do that anymore. I'm like, yeah, we'll see about that. And then, <laughs> and then sure enough, I was like, uh, yeah, hey, Fwiz, uh, my, ch <laughs> my channel's gone. He's like, yeah, you're going to have to get rid of all those tags oh from all God. your videos. Yeah. So, but yeah, you, you, can, you can do the, you can do the timestamps, get around that. Yeah, um, I actually, um, we're looking at timestamp data right now, and we're finding a really interesting thing is for t for videos that are like this, where like you have a podcast, it's very, very good because it increases your search results because you can, you, can, you can put a lot through it. For videos that are shorter, like 10 to 15 minutes, um, we don't have the data on this yet, so I want to be really specific, but it's a, it's a suspicion. Um, we think it lowers watch time. Because what people do is they click through timestamps for things that they want to watch, and then they don't watch the video all the way through. That makes sense. So it's possible that timestamps are actually negative impact value for um, like 10 minutes or less. Videos. Yeah, I don't do that on like mm -hmm. my normal videos. It's only for the podcast stuff just because obviously there's so many different topics and I get it. You know, not like I've clicked on podcasts and been like, yeah, I don't really, really want to hear about that. I want to hear about this and just skip around. Yeah, I'm only interested in the now, now I'm to the point where I'm added. super disappointed yeah. if I watch a long video and it doesn't have timestamps. I'm like, I love that feature. Yeah, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think so. All right. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. It's been almost three hours. This is, I think, our longest episode, which has been great. But nice. there's been so much, so much to talk about. I think people are going to find a lot of useful information in here. I've learned a lot. I think we've all learned a lot, which is cool. Even, and if, I, this, I would, even if this didn't go live, it's still a win for us. Yeah. So yeah. So same here. And I'd, and I'd love to I'd love to chat again sometime, whether it's this podcast or come on your show or whatever. I, I'd love to chat again because, I mean, I feel like not enough people have these conversations about this sort of stuff and it, it and it's yes. only useful for people involved and the people watching like i don't think there's any downside to it which is cool so 100 percent agree um, man and like i'd love to come if there's ever like any kind of like big industry thing that happens like hit me up um and then uh i want to like grab all your contact information on discord for both yeah. of you yeah we can and, do that because uh, I, I i do a lot of like shows and like a lot of stuff like that too um i'm on a few podcasts and things like that on a pretty consistent basis i'd love for you guys to like show up on and they, they, they you get a lot of um get paid an exposure you know like yeah, there's yeah. a lot of like <laughs> yeah it would be it would be cool and um yeah i'd love to have i mean i really industry. enjoyed this talk it's yeah. been an honor to be like in front of like two like mega youtubers and like um seeing not, what you guys do to become not successful. mega youtubers these days man there's people out there <laughs> got that jelly guy getting half a billion views a month <laughs> dude two small beans compared to that 
no, yeah, it's, all, it's all relative. Hours. Yeah, it's all relative, obviously. But what do you say, Anthony? Yeah. Oh, my views per month now are. The, the, I, I am now. I am at a position now what 100k was six years ago. <laughs> 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 I'm a small, big channel. If that makes sense. Yeah. So. All right, well, let, let, let everybody know where, where to find your stuff and, and you know, what, what you got going on these days. Feel free to shout it all out. Oh, all. thank you. Um, sure. I, so I'm Devin Nash across all platforms. It's just consistent branding. So Twitter, uh, YouTube, and Twitch are where I'm most active. Twitch.tv slash Devin Nash, YouTube.com slash Devin Nash, and Twitter, I think, are the best places to find me. And I, what I do is um, I only stream pretty, like, I stream consistently, but uh, follow my own advice, but... Uh, only, if, but so, but only Monday to Friday. So like I'll, I'll broadcast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't stream weekends, and then YouTube videos are just whenever <laughs> it yeah, happens. I like, don't, that's but, how I've always yeah. approached it. Like it, whenever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. People, it's just like when it happens, when I feel it out, they just. They but show I mean, you, about one yeah. a week. Mm -hmm. it, people listening should definitely go check out your YouTube channel and check out the Thank streams, you. but especially the YouTube channel because there's already tons of stuff up there that takes a deeper dive into some of the stuff we barely brushed on or, or stuff we didn't even mention. So. I exclusively um, talk about like industry level, like thought type of stuff, either something big that happens in the industry or st growth metrics and things like that. And I, I talk to a lot of people. About yeah. This. And I genuinely yeah. really enjoy your videos and I've watched quite a bit of Thank them. You so so much. yeah, that's it's a, good stuff. Yeah, it's huge coming from you. That's like insane. Yeah. Well, yeah. no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I that it. that's a wrap. Appreciate, right. appreciate you coming on. Yeah, it is an honor. Thank you both.